Okay, well, Julian Lopetegui's not had much time at the club so far, only seven games in, and Postacoglu on the other hand. He's been here for over a year. He's won many admirers for his club's style of play, even with the odd uh, or even calamitous hiccup in the back line. None more so, in fact, than Julian Lopetegui, it would seem, because the West Ham boss has admitted he loves to watch Tottenham for their good intensity. Um, he's really enjoyed it so far this season. Uh, I'm sure he'll be hoping not to enjoy it so much this afternoon as the team's locked horns. I wonder if anyone uh, has given him the memo yet that there is really no love lost between these two sides. The atmosphere is absolutely raving here as the Spurs team gets uh, called out across the Tannoy. West Ham fans, of course, have uh, fond recent memories, haven't they? They came from behind to beat Spurs here last December. In fact, they're undefeated in three away London derbies as well. Spurs, meanwhile... Interestingly, they're wrestling with a bit of an unwanted stat here in short in North London. If you take a look back at their last seven in the league at home, they win one and they lose the next. And as the sequence goes, it means that they would be due for a defeat this weekend. Hmm. Wonder how it's going to go. Uh, it basically just sets this up for what will surely be an unpredictable, frenzied affair. The battle lines are drawn. The bragging rights are up for grabs. And... Uh, just those three points as well. I absolutely cannot wait for this one. Delighted to bring you this in the company of the former Man City West Ham and England defender and manager Stuart Pearce. But first, TalkSport's chief football commentator Sam Matterface. Well, unsurprisingly, with the appointment of a new England manager, there has been a lot of harking back to 1966. These two, Tottenham and West Ham, they love that decade. So much so that Tottenham still play with a style akin to the swinging 60s, free, open, entertaining and be damned with the consequences. Probably why, as fun as their games are, Spurs have made their worst start to a Premier League season in 16 years. West Ham, whose players scored all the goals in the World Cup final win over Germany, would love to see their team play in a similar fashion. But despite a dugout change, there has been no sign of the cultural revolution they hoped for, and wins are still being rationed. The Hammers won here last season but haven't defeated Spurs in back-to-back -back league trips across London since, well, funnily enough, 1966, when it was all Beatles and Beach Boys. A win today, and there will be nothing but good vibrations in the away end. We are underway after the players stopped to take the knee in support of the No Room for Racism campaign. Tottenham shooting from right to left in white shirts, dark trim, and dark navy shorts and West Ham United who immediately have to deal with an injury to Emerson over on the far side in claret shirts with blue sleeves and white shorts attacking the goal away to our right hand side Stuart Pearce a child of the 60s is alongside me Spurs very good at home how will West Ham plan to hurt them well, they've got to defend them particularly well for a start. <clears throat> Tottenham like to overload, like to get players forward. That leaves spaces in behind. Quick counter-attacks obviously is going to be the order of the day for West Ham. If they can counter those with Antonio, Bowen and Kudos, they've got a chance. Kudos has it over on the far touchline, just a yard in from the left-hand side. He goes back towards the halfway line and sends it to Jean-Claire Todibo. He started the last two games, his first two starts in the Premier League. It's put, he's seen in a little bit of trouble with a loose pass, but it's won by Kulisevsky on halfway after then. A subsequent mistake in midfield by Guido Rodriguez. And Tottenham have the ball just short of the halfway line. A free kick has been given left of the centre circle. We can harp on about the pass as much as we like, but this stadium, stadium is clearly one built for the future. And uh, Spurs, who have acquired Solanke in an attempt to get on with the future, quickly tried to release him down the right channel, but Ariola was quickly off his line before he smacked the ball out of play over on the far side. Yeah, quality ball through, I've got to say, and Ariola's come out, he should really be gathering that, going to ground, gathering it into his body. He decided to uh, just kick it to the touchline instead. Fast start by Tottenham, who have the ball right side with Pedro Porro, whose ball into the box is steered behind by Guido Rodriguez, and it's out for the first corner of the game over on the far side in front of those 3,400 West Ham supporters that have made the journey across London this afternoon. The box packed away to our left with Claret and Blue jerseys. A short corner is taken quickly to Madison from Kulisevsky. Back to Kulisevsky. Poor pass by Madison. Pinched by Bowen. Puts it through the Swedes' legs and then runs it out of play on the far side and away for a throw. What a waste of a set piece that was. Yeah, it certainly was. As I say, trying to set it back. Madison set it back nice and gently. 
to Kulusevski to come on and whip it in but left it too short and a brave tackle by Bowen well this stadium an absolute <laughs> delight to work in and to sit and watch your football in it's high steep stands in the bowl with an undulating silver roof all shiny glass and decorated like a Tottenham themed Christmas tree a huge golden cockerel planted on top of that a, a, a end away to our right hand side that big white wall of noise which rakes from the bottom to the top without any st steps for a new tier this is one big tier that goes right the way back into the sky and it produces a hell of a noise when Tottenham attack it usually in the second half they're attacking the other end at the moment Kulisevsky good body swerve gets the ball back from Madison his weight of pass this time almost perfect Emerson comes in to stop him from poking it out into the right wing position looking for the run of Brennan Johnson and eventually cleared out to the near touchline and away for a throw into Spurs you have the ball once again and Postacoglu certainly wanted a response from his team after letting a two goal lead slip at Brighton Julian Lepetegui will want to build on the win over Ipswich just before the international break here is Basuma coming into midfield for Bentancourt today square through the centre circle finding Christian Romero Romero takes a couple of steps forward finds Bissouma. He's dispossessed though, and it almost broke kindly for Kudus, and it was only the reactions of Romero that stopped it from doing so. And when West Ham do win the ball in that sort of mid area, there is a lot of space to run into behind the Tottenham defence. Yeah, there certainly is, and that's the vulnerability of uh, this Spurs team under Ange. As I say, they do squeeze on, leaving two players to cover the, the entirety of the pitch in and around the halfway line top quality sport all day on TalkSport and TalkSport 2 today this game followed by our round the ground service and the phone in from 5.30 on TalkSport 2 Oxford versus West Brom already underway followed by Fulham Aston Villa then Quinns against Bath from 5 o'clock in the Gallagher Premiership live sport when you want it the best place to access it is on the TalkSport app Nil nil here we played just over four and a half minutes and here is Pedro Porro into the centre of the West Ham half Solanke holds off to Debo and then tucks it into the left corner there's an offside flag up against Son and a free kick given to West Ham on the edge of their own penalty area Mikel Antonio needed just less than a minute to find the net against Ipswich so he will be the one that is the big threat he likes scoring against Spurs six Premier League goals against them more than any other Premier League opponent and they haven't got into the Tottenham half yet West Ham United the, all the action has been at the other end he's had a busy week as well Mikel Antonio with his journey back from Jamaica playing for Steve McLaren on Monday night long ball forward by Ariola was a little bit wayward really and unnecessary he's almost gone straight out of play it has gone for a West Ham throw another long ball dollied up into the air inviting Antonio to compete for it he got a little nudge from Van de Ven the header falls for Guido Rodriguez who then gives it straight to Destiny a doggy then Rodriguez the Mexican wins it back again there's a bit of a tussle between him and a doggy and then Tadebo will see it back to Ariola once more yeah West Ham not been too clinical playing out from the back and once again Ariola giving it away cheap ball ball forward to Porro on to Johnson he gets it again right foot he tries to ram it in from a tight angle on the volley after the return from Solanke and from an angle which was even tighter than the edge of the six-yard box and further down the side, he decided to rifle it across the face of goal, aiming for the far corner, and he only missed by a couple of feet, I think. Well, great opportunity there, just sat up for him. So he thought to himself, you know what, I'm going to smash this across the face of the goal. If someone gets a touch, all well and good. If it ends up in the back of the net, all well and good. And West Ham have only got themselves to blame on that free kick. They went backwards instead of forwards and give it away twice. Has scored in each of his last seven for club and country, Brennan Johnson. The last time a player scored in six straight games for Spurs, it was Harry Kane. And uh, ball back towards Ariola, which Solanke is chasing down. And he shows a nifty little bit of footwork in order to get away from Solanke and clear the ball upfield. Here is Madison, deep inside his own half, lifting the ball over the top of the West Ham defence. It hits the back of Wan-Bissaka. Falls to Son, the South Korean who stayed at home during the international break because of the injury that he had. Feeds the ball down the left touchline, looking for Kulisevsky, who's challenged by Guido Rodriguez, and it's out of play and away for another corner this time. Tottenham will hope to make more of it. Nil-nil in all our games up and down the country at this moment in time, including here. Yeah, Sam, we talked about West Ham's counter-attack theme 
that they've got to employ today. The other side of that is they can't afford to give the ball away cheaply because Tottenham will hurt them. Here is Kulisevsky, edge of the penalty area after another short corner given back to Madison. Madison whips it in right foot in towards the near post, away by Rodriguez, forward by uh, Pedro Porro. He's given it away cheaply to Paqueta and then he's nudged it up to the halfway line and then picking it up now Antonio who just trundles down the left touchline, waits for support. Rodriguez provides that and then it goes wider to Kudus and then Pakatar swings it from left side to right taken out of the sky by Wambasaka. long sleeve shirt on today for Aaron Wambasaka, signed in the summer from Manchester United and then all the way back to Todibo who after being acquired from Nice took a little bit of time to get into the first team but is very much in it now Ariola again with a poor kick which goes straight out of play and it went high over the halfway line and into the left fullback position fell into touch and it's away for a throw in to Tottenham Hotspur goalless on TalkSport after 8 minutes Julian Lepetegui just stalking the touchline down in front of us standing perpendicular to the edge of his technical area light grey golfing jumper on today and black slacks as he looks on as Van der Ven picks a pass down the left touchline looking for Son a doggy's gone on the underlap and he picks the ball up but can't get round Rodriguez who's had a busy start to the game it's another corner yeah Rodriguez has had to uh, cover his full back there wan has gone nice and tight with Son as you would expect to nullify him and then he's had runners go in behind him and a couple of times Rodriguez has gone to ground and made good challenges nine minutes gone and Madison this time deciding not to go short and delivering a ball into the box which Romero and Solanke may well try to attack Van der Ven is at the near post it's aimed towards the far post and Solanke trying to get up there but it's away by Paqueta collected now by Porro who's immediately harassed by Kudus he puts the ball out of play perpendicular with the edge of the 18 yard box and it goes out for a throw Johnson comes short for Porro it's thrown into him former Nottingham Forest man just tries to turn away but can't get clear of Emerson Emerson then pokes it into Paqueta who gets it out wide towards the left it's helped on by Emerson to Kudus and then they force themselves forward here that's a good work, bit of work by Emerson and now it's three on three in West Ham coming forward on the right hand side with Aaron Wambasaka and then Bowen Tottenham shirt scurrying back into position now and getting to the edge of the penalty area maybe West Ham just didn't move it more as precise as they needed to and as quick as they needed to to unsettle that back line but they've got it into Bowen now and he's running in between centre back and full back down the right side of the box a low cross into the box comes all the way through to Kudus and it's saved by Vicario who palms it over the top from a distance of about seven yards an excellent move by West Ham well cultivated and Bowen who dragged the ball through the 18 yard box picked out Kudus perfectly and his shot straight down the throat of Vicario otherwise that was 1-0 well brilliantly set up by Bowen there what he does he runs at you as a defender and he keeps the ball really tight to his feet so you never think to yourself I can have a nibble at this at any given time drove it across the face of goal Kudos come on to it curled it with his right in step and just the goalkeeper went straight at him but great reaction goalkeeper struggling again from the set piece goes back into the box after a header away and it comes back out towards Emerson who just flicks his foot at it and drives it well wide from the edge of the box well I must admit, that was a set piece which Tottenham looked very uncomfortable with and Vicario was struggling to get his way out of what was a vice-like grip from the West Ham forwards. They have played their way out very neatly here. Romero's fizzed the ball into Kulisevsky. He's found Johnson. Emerson watched it all the way, pinched it, turned it over. Could have held on to it when he was under pressure from Porro and they've just got up to the halfway line here West Ham United and Bowen on this right hand side and then just after a period where Tottenham dominated the football and dominated the chances of what few there were West Ham just reminding them that they too have a sting in their tail Stuart yeah exactly that Sam as I say Tottenham were for the first uh, nine minutes or so looked the, the team in ascendancy but West Ham just put a marker down and said we got some talent in our ranks as well that will hurt you Jared Bowen who didn't make the last England squad will be looking to impress the new England manager Thomas Tuchel here is Antonio back to Bowen who initially started this move he's bundled his way into the penalty area and across comes Basuma to nullify his run then he was allowed to travel some distance there down the right hand side Jared Bowen who has already proved to be a bit of a handful 
Yeah, as I say, his main strength, Bowen, is he runs at you with pace, but he keeps that ball so tight to both feet, he manipulates it. And as a defender, what you want is them to just over push their touch and then you can clear them out. Jordan Clark has scored for Luton, who lead Watford by a goal to nil. It's a 12.30 kickoff in the Championship. Luton have taken just one point from their last three games, but they're ahead in that match at Kenilworth Road. Tackle on Kulisevsky by Rodriguez was not one that the referee was prepared to accept. Andy Madley is in charge today, VAR Chris Kavanagh. And a free kick has been given just in front of the centre circle, just right of it inside West Ham territory and given to Tottenham's Mickey van der Ven, the fastest player in the Premier League this season. I saw the, the list come out this week of top speeds clocked. He was up there. Carl Walker wasn't even in the top ten. Well, maybe he's playing within himself this season, Carl. No, he hasn't played that much, has he, Carl Walker? But he wasn't in the top ten this campaign. Carl Forbes was in there. Wolverhampton Wanderers as well. I think he was number two. Timo Werner, as you would imagine, was also on that list. In, the top. in fact, Tottenham were the only team, I think, to have two players in the top ten for speed. Here they are on the ball with Christian Romero, just right of the centre circle, forward into Solanke, who's dropped deep, turned it round the corner to Kulisevsky, he's then continued his run into the box, waiting for the cross, which might come from Brennan Johnson, he goes low instead to Kulisevsky, trying to fend the ball away from Paqueta, but it comes bouncing out towards the near side, before eventually working its way to a doggy, a doggy changing the angle of the attack, Madison, a touch, and then he tried to prod it into the left channel for Son, but it wasn't a great and purposeful prod it hit Bowen who eventually then got in a wrestling match with Madison and smuggled the ball out on this near side it's a throw in to West Ham United yeah West Ham looks as though they've eased themselves into the game a little bit more it's probably more 50-50 on uh, possession at present and they've settled into the game a touch it's still 0-0 and this is Kulisevsky the young Swede who He's playing in a deeper role this season. It is quite an aggressive midfield, really, when you think about it. Kulisevsky and Madison in with Basuma as the ball goes into the box. An aggressive cross from Pedro Porro. Madison tries to nudge it forward. Picked up by a doggy. He's trying to turn it round the corner for Son. Son now running at Aaron Wambasaka. Then leaves it. Plays it into a doggy. He finds Madison. Set back for Basuma. Then back left towards Son. Son takes on the defender. Gets onto his right foot. Cards it towards the far corner and misses the top of the post by just an inch or so. A lovely move by Tottenham Hotspur, their captain, just shaping the ball towards the far corner after making space inside the box. They took a couple of touches to get the ball around into a position where he could try and bend it round the back of wan and he curled that beautifully towards the far side of Ariola's goal, but just couldn't bring it in enough. No, he couldn't. This is my first view in live of, of Tottenham this year and so on, and... Uh, Looks as though he's lost some of that dynamic speed, but what he has got, an intelligence, good movement of body there. Doing so again, dancing into the box, keeping hold of it, and then, well, taking too long to distribute it, getting a bump off Guido Rodriguez and taking that invitation to go down. Mikel Antonio has just run into a doggy, who I don't think really could have got out of the way, but Mikel Antonio made it certain that it looked like it just run into a brick wall. Uh, took the slam and then went down crashing to earth yeah to be fair he done well he uh, took it out and bought his team a little bit of respite there and got him up the pitch a touch but just saying about Son Resch mentioned it earlier he's 32 years old now his game's developing slightly in a different manner but I, I don't see this dynamic athlete that used to burst in behind without the ball with the ball um, he's more technical if you like yeah. you know he's had to develop like the likes of Shearer and Owen and people of the like did Van der Ven pitching the ball off Antonio and then getting it down the left towards Solanke who's challenged by Rodriguez who's got through a lot of work in the opening 17 minutes covering for those who have made errors and he's slid the ball out and away for a corner kick on this near side Cardiff have taken the lead against Plymouth in the championship by a goal to nil after 16 minutes Luton lead Watford nil nil Oxford United West Brom which is live on two right now and Preston nil Coventry City nil in League One still goalers between Reading and Crawley and Wickham and Peterborough and in League Two just the one game at lunchtime today it's Accrington one Barrow nil ball delivered to the far post from the corner Madison's ball goes straight into the arms of Ariola, and it will be cleared by Tottenham 0-0 
Yeah, Ariola, great take there. Just come out, tempted the goalkeeper out, and he come and took it under no challenge at all. Well, Tottenham's defeat at Brighton saw them take a two-goal lead from just two, uh, sh three shots on target. And Postecoglou will be hoping that his players get uh, a more of a sight of goal because for all the possession, the Son shot is really all they've had to show for it as West Ham come forward again. They've had a shot on target already today and they might have another one here with wan who just couldn't sort his feet out after Bowen had won it inside the box. He's got it again. He's wriggled away from a doggy. A low ball into the box. Could have shoots this time. He's not going to miss. It's into the top corner and they lead by a goal to nil West Ham United. 18 minutes gone. Jared Bowen keeping it alive but it looked like it had gone again. He got down the outside of a doggy, ran across the length of the penalty area by going on the outside down by the goal line pulled it back for Kudus and he smashed it home 18 gone West Ham lead Tottenham nil West Ham won yeah it's Bowen again on the set up brilliant just drives at people in the box kept it really tight I've got to say ball into the box and they probably should have cleared it with a doggy he didn't do that West Ham kept it alive and from that moment on when Bowen got in the box He's tempted players out, very similar to the earlier one that Vicaro managed to uh, stop particularly well. This one ended up in the back of the net. Well, no player has had more successful dribbles in the Premier League this season than Mohamed Kudus. But from that, he's only conjured just two chances. What he was last season was their second top scorer. He's taken that chance and he has got his second goal of the season. There will be an inquest in that Tottenham defence as to why, one, a doggy didn't deal with the situation initially and why Mickey van der Ven doesn't go out to engage once the ball comes across the face of the penalty area, Stuart Pearce. Well, I think van der Ven's situation is Jared's run at him on a couple of occasions and what it does, it sows that seed of doubt in your mind as a defender and all of a sudden you don't go as tight as you should do because of it. 20 minutes gone, West Ham lead by a goal to nil. It's yet another game where Ange Postacoglu's team have con uh, conceded. Their only clean sheet so far this season in the Premier League was the home game against Everton. And now they've got to respond. Here comes Pedro Porro down the right side for Tottenham. Into Brennan Johnson, clattered by... Uh, Emerson, he's gone down, still Tottenham play, Kulisevsky looking for Son down in the inside left channel but Johnson is down over on the far side poor clearance by Bowen, picked up by Kulisevsky his ball into the box is easily picked out by uh, Ariola, and Johnson still gingerly getting back to his feet, he only played 45 minutes in the international break because of a knock he picked up and suspension, that was a hefty challenge Looking at this game as well, especially with West Ham in the ascendancy now on the, on the uh, goal scoring front, the importance of the likes of Suchek and Rodriguez, we've seen it from Rodriguez on three occasions now, getting back and, and making good defensive challenges, Suchek will play his part as well on that. Reading take the lead at home to Crawley by a goal to nil, hit with a transfer embargo during the international break, they haven't had a particularly good time off the pitch. And Reading performing well on it under Ruben Seles. Here is Socek trying to get it clear. Picked up on the near side by Bowen. Bowen tries to keep it infield, can't do so. Flanger up on this near touchline and away for a throw into Tottenham Hotspur who need to respond. Julian Lopetegui is uh, Lopetegui is uh, happy with what he's seen so far a well-structured West Ham who have been difficult to break down sat deep and willing to counter-attack and when they have counter-attack they've caused Tottenham problems they could have had another goal could have, could have scored the first one didn't what? missed it well the second he, he probably hit it too cleanly the first one the second one he's half scuffed and it's gone in the back of the net 22 gone 1-0 to West Ham who are on the defensive here Son takes it on Moves towards the edge of the penalty area, tries to play a 1-2 with Kulisevsky. Uh, away by wan -Bissaka. comes back to Madison, he curls it to the far post. Johnson trying to get there, but Emerson did. And watched it, glanced it behind and away for a corner. You're listening to Talk Sport live at the 
Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, Tottenham near West Ham, one on TalkSport with Sky Sports, and don't forget you can stream the biggest Premier League games available, no contract on now, like Bournemouth versus Arsenal, live today. West Ham having to defend yet another corner for Tottenham, swung in by Pedro Porro, headed away by Emerson. Porro's got it back again, far side, now on the right angle of the penalty area. Tucks it back into a doggy, gives it to Madison. Lovely little skip past Pakita, and he ends up sending the ball back into the arms of Alphonse Ariola, and all the way back to the French goalkeeper. And that corner at kick routine came with very little trouble. Paul from Basuma has given the ball away in midfield and West Ham have profited. Lucas Paqueta nudges it back into Rodriguez. Collected right side, round the corner from Socek. On to Bowen. Bowen now runs at a doggy who has to get back into position here. Hasn't quite done it yet. It's gone a little bit too wide from Kudus and that's pushed him out towards the touchline. Then it comes into the feet of Wambasaka. This is good football. Paqueta into Wambasaka, back to Kudus. Basuma goes to ground, he ends up on a heap on the floor. Paqueta gets it back again, sends it square. Now it's on to Kilman. West Ham building confidently here after 23 and a half minutes at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. Bowen wants it back again, floated by Tadebo, but too high and too long. And it fades out of play and away for a throw in. Yeah, they're growing in confidence, West Ham. That goal's given them a big lift, there's no doubt about that. And it's, it's Tottenham that have got an attempt to find a way through. Tottenham trailing here by goal to nil. Cardiff now 2 0 up against Plymouth. Here's Christian Romero. He strides forward over the halfway line. He's got Kudis in front of him. Goes square to Mickey van der Ven. Easy to forget that before that rather calamitous collapse down at Brighton Spurs had won five games in a row in all competitions a glance at the table though tells you a little bit more context they are ninth and that is not an area that this team wants to be residing in and that's because those five wins all came in three different competitions here is Van de Ven again looking up nudging the ball into Madison West Ham again have retreated into shape on the edge of their own penalty area. Pedro Porro is struck from distance. It took a deflection off Guido Rodriguez. Goes behind and away for another corner. Yeah, I don't think West Ham will worry too much about conceding corners. They've got quite a good physical presence within their team. They're falling towards the near post. Flicked up into the air by Romero. Tadebo did well. It's fallen to Son, who's reluctant to shoot. When he eventually does, it takes a deflection off a combination of wan and Kilman and goes behind and away for another corner. And they've had quite a few so far in this game. This is their seventh of the match, and we've only played 26 minutes. Yeah, they've had a lot of corners, but none of them you would suggest that, certainly from first contact point of view, that they've looked threatening at all to West Ham. Well, still haven't had a shot on target so far, Tottenham, and West Ham have had two, and they lead by a goal to nil. Here is Madison, hands in the air, on this near touchline, swinging the ball deep towards the far post, but it's too heavy and floats out of play rather harmless. Well, it hasn't been the greatest uh, the first 25 and a half minutes, is it, for, for Tottenham Hotspur? Well, I think they started quite well in those early minutes, but... Since then, West Ham have grown. They've grown in confidence in regard to uh, the goal. And they've shown a, more of a sensibility about playing out from the back. I think earlier on they played out from the back. It looked a little bit shaky, but they've uh, played out slightly better since then. Tottenham nil, West Ham 1 live on TalkSport. The latest odds come from Betfair, the official betting partner of TalkSport's Premier League coverage. Right now you can get Tottenham to win at 23 to 20, West Ham to win 2 to 1, back the draw at 9 to 4. That's all thanks to Betfair, who are paying out winning bets at 90 minutes with 90 minute guarantee. Terms and conditions apply. 18 plus. Be gamble aware. Dot org. I'll tell you what I, I've been buoyed up by by both teams, Ooh. Sam. Is the fact that they they've put the ball in the box from crossing areas, both of them. You know, they've whipped it in when they've had opportunities to. I get a little bit bored when it goes out wide and then it comes back across the back line and they don't take the opportunities to put it in the box. Oh, one by Tadebo in midfield. He sort of stepped out of the fence to Rob uh, initially and then he's lost it again and then it's come back to a doggy. He sent it into the box and Johnson is up there and he's headed it wide from six yards out. How has he missed? What a fantastic cross from a doggy. 
basically Tadebo had gone on the chase and tried desperately to win the ball high up he completely lost his bearings given the ball back to a doggy who'd gone down the left hand side clipped the ball into the box and then Brennan Johnson who has scored seven goals in seven games for club and country didn't hit it properly it came off his shoulder and went wide yeah I'm not sure I think it ended up forget and managed to get a touch on it and that's what the referees give another corner for Madison sending the ball into the box from the corner back in it goes after initially falling forced to Solanke doesn't quite come down for him can't pod it goalwards and it's pushed behind by Kilman and it's corner number nine for Tottenham uh, this must be breaking Premier League records isn't it nine corners in 27 minutes and Postacoglu standing on the touchline hoping for a, an upturn in fortunes not that he was that bothered about set pieces once upon a time if I remember rightly uh, free kick to be taken over on the far side Porro in towards the near post it floats past everybody went past Romero come back to Madison who then sends it into Solanke who tried an ambitious overhead kick but he didn't quite catch the ball properly and it spills into the arms of Ariola, and it's cleared away an well, interesting start to the game 28 minutes gone and Tottenham haven't really threatened Ariola as of yet but they had plenty of opportunities to get the ball into the box maybe their final ball into the box just hasn't been perfect yet West Ham have broken on a couple of occasions had two shots on target and could have scored the only goal and again they've just played around Tottenham a little bit too easy here to get out and up to the halfway line then it's nudged with the outside of the right boot by Kudus into the path of Wambasaka from the right wing position tries to get the cross and it's blocked by Son it goes out of play and it's away for a corner yeah West Ham just looking a little bit more direct than Tottenham at this moment in time and when the likes of uh, Bowen especially and Kudos get the ball in wide areas they look as though they've got more of a cut in edge in those wide areas well here's the corner to be taken by Jared Bowen for West Ham in front of that huge raking south stand here at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium a uh, bit of attention for Vicario he's trying to sort of loosen the knot that is set up around him and Richarlison gets a bit of a round of applause as he re returns to the touchline warming up Bowen delivers to the far post but it misses Kilman and it goes straight over the top of everybody and out for a goal kick away to our right hand side bit of a waste well, in all honesty what you're looking to do at this stage of your West Ham is just load the goalkeeper up and put it under the crossbar let him attempt to deal with it yeah, he hasn't got the best of histories with that so you're right that would have been the sensible way of doing things Son has hesitated had it pinched by wan -Bissaka. West Ham have got it again on halfway and there's just a little bit of hesitancy about Tottenham in this opening half an hour some bright passages but also just a lack of cutting edge Spurs find themselves behind Kudus just before the half way mark turns it infield runs into traffic but still manages to come away with it and that's not the first time he then holds on to it maybe a little bit too long because Antonio was in good space down the left hand side and then Paqueta gives it straight to Pedro Porro and Tottenham now urged to go forward but again just a little bit too hesitant to do so they took too much time and as a result West Ham have got it back into shape but here's Johnson fed by Madison across comes Kilman gets it away and uh, West Ham get out, but not too far because Basuma's won it back. Madison, right side of the area, just 10 yards from the edge of the box, played into Johnson, not a great pass by Pedro Porro, over hit, and it will just trickle out of play, down by the touchline, and out for a throw, a um, goal kick away to our left-hand side, 32 gone. Yeah, both teams a little bit guilty there of not playing the ball forward when a forward pass was on and missed opportunities, and then Tottenham managed to wrestle possession back and from that they just give poor passes really one that was under hit and one that was over it and that killed the attack well West Ham thrashed Ipswich 4-1 before the international break Mikel Antonio Kudis Bowen and Paqueta were all on target but the challenge now to build on that performance that was that was laid down by Lopetegui and uh, he knows that they want a semblance of a run now. That might prove to be tricky as they haven't managed back-to-back -back league victories since March. But they're in front here. Oxford nil, West Brom 1 is the latest scoreline from TalkSport 2. Here it's West Ham who lead. 
and Lopetegui wasn't taking anything for granted after that win over Ipswich he knows that they had to redouble their efforts and focus here to get anything and they have started the game very well structured and yeah they are direct they're not necessarily as pretty as Tottenham but they've managed to knit together a few passages of play which have cut Tottenham open rather easily and they've scored the opening goal you know I just think Lopetegui's getting to know his staff a little bit getting to know the the players and which one work for him and which ones don't you know and they look certainly better today in the structure that we, they're playing that's for sure Romero into Solanke back to Romero once again 33 gone here is Kulisevsky. he will then take it wide towards the edge of the penalty area play it left for Tottenham's captain Son who goes down the outside of Bowen who protects his box really well there gets in front of Son and deflects it behind and away for a corner yeah certainly uh, a feature of West Ham's play is uh, more advanced players getting back and doing their defensive shift at the moment Madison sends it into space for Pedro Porro who shoots from distance and then Ariola reacts really well for a crowd of players to make a save down low he lost sight of it after just parrying it out but then regathered it quickly before Solanke could close him down I'll tell you what that is a top quality save it really is. it's took a big big deflection off Rodriguez he's going the wrong way and he's got down to not only get a strong left hand on it but keep it close to his body to get the seconds that was excellent work from uh, Ariola. that is not <laughs> as he just gets the ball on the edge of the six yard area tried to play it to Kilman and kicked it straight out of play the life of a goalkeeper use your hands <laughs> you're fine try to use your feet <laughs> you're not so much <laughs> ten minutes to go before half time Sam Madderface and Stuart Pearce at Tottenham Hotspur the ball in towards the near post from the right side and Pedro Porro another pinball session inside the West Ham Fox but they don't allow the ball to reach Solanke it goes behind the way for yet another corner I think on your charity bet you had over 58 corners I do believe didn't you today <laughs> I wish I did uh, this is corner number 11 for Tottenham Hotspur now they haven't made any of them count in fact I don't think they've had a shot on target at all yet here's the ball in towards the uh, near post it's uh, headed away I think the, the effort that they have had was deflected into uh, Ariola's arm so maybe that counts as a shot on target now but they haven't creating anything from those corners and this one's no different as the ball is cleared easily and then a foul given against uh, Madison and it's going to be a free kick to West Ham United who lead here with 10 minutes to go before the break by a goal to nil I just don't think you feel as though Tottenham are going to score from one of these set plays do you I mean West Ham have got first contact on literally all of the 11 corners no. That win over Ipswich brought to an end a five-game winless run for West Ham. They hadn't seen many victories since the new manager came in. Certainly not as many as they'd been hoping for. They hadn't seen as much change as they've been hoping for, but they were doing OK here. But Madison now trying to do something about that. Driving through the middle of the pitch and sending it wide onto Kulisevsky. Cuts in on his left foot. Shoots towards the near corner. Comes off the goalkeeper's fingertip. Off the post and in. And the equaliser is credited to Kulisevsky picking the ball up on the right side of the box culling it on his left foot driving the ball down low to the goalkeeper's left he fingertipped the ball onto the inside of the post it agonisingly trickled along the goal line before eventually coming off the other post and nestling into the net Kulisevsky waited and waited and waited then burst into celebration because it's Tottenham 1 West Ham 1 well, we talked about West Ham having that counter-attack threat. It was West Ham, it was Tottenham on that occasion. Good ball by Madison, well-weighted pass out to Kulisevsky. And he had one thing on his mind, inside, 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 a load of shots. Ariola strong left hand to it, but it hit both posts and ended up in the back of the net. That was a good effort. Brilliant attempt at a save from Ariola, who got down superbly but could not stop it from spinning off his glove and off the inside of the post and it's 1-1 one, one. well I think at the start of the game Sam we thought to ourselves this, this game will have goals in it and could go either way and after 37 minutes there's been nothing to dissuade us from that statement that 
this goal game could have goals in it and could go either way. Here is Kudus again driving forward this time for West Ham on the left as they look at it. It's eventually curled out by Socek to Bowen. Bowen into Juan Basaka. Bowen wants it back again. And West Ham trying to get a little bit of control back in the game. To Debo, up to Socek, then on to Rodriguez, out to Wambasaka. Better from West Ham, over hit by Wambasaka, and then Antonio didn't come and chase for it. And it goes back to Vicario from Kulisevsky. And Spurs have the ball again. Good header by Johnson into the path of Kulisevsky. Solanke makes sure he gets it. He sort of tries to bundle clear of uh, Emerson. Didn't quite escape his grasp, but Emerson picked it up and he's allowed to travel a long way forward. Antonio then turns, fires out to Kudus at a, a rapid pace and he couldn't control it. And it goes straight back to Romero from Pedro Porro and Tottenham have it back again. Yeah, right idea from Antonio, but awful execution, I've got to say. He needed the ball in front of him and shoved in front. And instead, he's decided to wrap it into his groin area. Yes, he, uh, he passed that with a little bit of hot sauce on it, didn't he? <laughs> Here is uh, Pedro Porro on the underlap, getting down the right-hand side. Ball into the box, looking for Son, cut out by wan and cleared out to the far side. Again, a quick and fast Tottenham counter-attack. And actually... That's what they didn't do 10 minutes ago when they had the ball. There was a hesitancy and a, maybe a reluctance to shove the ball forward and get up the pitch quickly. Now they've done that on a couple of un occasions. They've unsettled West Ham's defence. Yeah, I think West Ham's confidence within the game has pushed them on a little bit and it's just left the odd space on the counter. Here is Basuma into Madison, 10 yards back from the edge of the D. It's Tottenham trying to control the tempo of the game. Always a difficult thing to do because they are so liable to the ball over the top and runs in behind. They have to be a little bit cautious. Also, their passing isn't always as perfect as it need be. Here's Son onto Kulisevsky, trying to get into the box on his right foot. This time takes a deflection. It's blocked, actually, by Juan Bissaka, who did well. In a 1v1 situation, the ball spills out to the near touchline and then Spurs recycle it again five minutes before the break. Cardiff winning, Luton winning, West Brom winning, and it's still 0-0 between Preston and... Coventry on talks ball here is Son down the left looking for a doggy stepping in to help out was Tadebo got in front of Ariola and cleared but he couldn't get any distance on that clearance and Basuma's won it back and more pressure from Tottenham and as we approach the last five minutes of the first half can they turn it around Pedro Porro slides it forward into the path of uh, Solanke who tried to just nudge it round the corner and just spin it up into Kulisevsky didn't work and it's into the arms of Ariola. Yeah, I've got to say, I've been quite impressed with Kulisevsky. I think he's been Tottenham's best player at the moment. Seems to be part and parcel of everything. And certainly he's the one that's gotten back in this game with that goal. Antonio uses his body brilliantly, then tries to go on the outside. Now, he tries to take on uh, Mickey van der Ven. Not an easy thing to do for pace. So he'll have to use a bit of power as well. The two speed merchants collide and van der Ven wins that jaw shoulder barge which gets Antonio sliding down the back of the camber behind the pitch and into the advertising holding and the Tottenham fans rather enjoyed that Stuart Pearce yeah they did but he's ended up getting himself in a bit of lumber there van der Ven you don't get involved in a physical match with Antonio on the halfway line no need let him have the ball and he'll overrun it slightly then you pick him off Madison thought he should have had a free kick on halfway. Andy Madley said play on. West Ham hesitated, didn't get the ball forward and then gave it away. wan takes it off Solanke as he tries to charge down the left. Then Bowen steps in for West Ham, shrugs off Madison. A little clip of the heels by Kulisevsky, but Bowen's still going. Didn't have anyone in front of him to pass the ball to, so had to go towards Emerson instead. And then West Ham trying to get out. Yeah, just trying to stabilise the game a little bit, West Ham. Just get a foothold back in the game at present. Here is Juan Basaka in the right fullback position. Travels up to halfway, sends it in field. Collected now by Guido Rodriguez, the Mexican, who clips it neatly into the path of Emerson, who pushes it on into the path of Paqueta, who tries to turn away from Christian Romero, then runs into Johnson, who picks it off and runs up to halfway. Then Paqueta gets booked for pulling him back that's going to be a free kick 
Yeah, I think Paquette has been a bit more lively today. I've seen him have more involvements in it, but just of late, he's just been a little bit loose with his uh, keeping of possession. And he's one that impressed last year and probably started the season a little bit slower than was expected. I think without doubt the, Tottenham, uh, the West Ham fans will tell you that. Here is a ball into the box by Pedro Porro, which was in such a difficult area that neither defender or forwards went for it. It went scooting through the box and out the other side. Son's retrieved it, given it to a doggy. He's found Madison. Madison's threatened to shoot, but then I thought it was probably a little bit too far out. Lovely back heel by Kulisevsky into a doggy, into the box. Pedro Porro arriving with a scissor kick over the bar. Well, what a good move that was. And again, Kulisevsky fully involved. A little back heel down the left into a doggy whose left-footed ball across the face of goal came straight to Pedro Porro, who scissor kicked the ball towards the far corner and only missed narrowly. I'll tell you what, we're looking at a goal of the season, a la sort of Di Canio from many years ago, that, that little jump-up hitch kick. And he's done really well because to manuf manufacture a, a finish from that that angle wouldn't have been easy and he's probably missed the far post by about a foot 1-1 one, one. talk sport and we've got 90 seconds to go before the break and it is currently Tottenham Hotspur 1 West Ham United 1 on talk sport with Enterprise Rent-A-Car Enterprise has 450 branches with all the vehicles your business needs and don't forget to check out talk sports YouTube channel loads of new fresh content coming boxing on talk boxing we've got new NFL shows as well each week and of course the football content that you need to keep you going that's Talk Sport on YouTube here is Madison down the left side trying to take on Socek Socek just waits goes to ground and then picks him off and it goes out for another corner he's been abs absolutely invaluable for West Ham over these last few years Socek not always the prettiest on the eye but the work rate that he gets through the goals that he scored not a bad acquisition. We're back in play again. Short corner taken to Kulisevsky. Uh, that was corner number 12 for Tottenham. But it's ended up with West Ham threatening to go on the counter. And before Kudus can feed Emerson or Antonio, who were high up on the halfway line, Basuma manages to nudge it out of play and away for a throw on this near side. Thomas Socek just trotting back into a, a midfield position. Looks a little bit older than his 29 years. 167th appearance for West Ham today 29 goals so far and uh, signed from Slavia Prague permanently for £21 million pounds three years ago long ball up towards Antonio he's allowed to run a long way with it Romero watched it Socek was backing up though as it was cleared by the Argentine it's come back to the left hand side Kudus has tried an acrobatic scissor kick which has seen the ball go up in the air Socek has run with Vicario who then almost dropped it as he grabbed it out of the sky and uh, there was a little bit of uh, chaos right at the end of the first half in which there is just one added minute here is a doggy down the left hand side he's got Son in space didn't use him decided to keep running and then the ball was pinched by wan -Bissaka. yeah top quality challenge there you've got to be very careful in the box wan -Bissaka just waited for his time to take it off him but Spurs are back on the ascendancy again into stoppage time at the end of the first half of which there's just going to be one minute Romero 15 yards from the edge of the D right side clips the ball into the box it's come right the way through to Son Son at a tight angle squares it into the six yard box away by Rodriguez and that's the end of the first half well I don't know where the West Ham markers went there but Son found himself in space inside the penalty area probably far too much space went down the left side but his ball back into the box went to no one in white and as a result it's all square at the break. Spurs have won three of their four home games in all competitions this season, but there's still all to play for here. Spurs have never drawn a game at home under Ange Postacoglu, so there is a lot more to come. Tottenham 1, West Ham 1. Keep it coming is what I say. Thank you very much, Sam Matafes. Very, very entertaining first half that where it is 1-1. Of course, West Ham took the earlier lead and Spurs have equalised. Spurs took a little while to get into this one didn't they it took a little while before they got comfortable but towards the end Stuart Pearce it was all Tottenham wasn't it yeah it was uh, they've had the ascendancy there's no doubt about it but it's been a very open game impossible to call at this stage 
Uh, Spurs have had 11 corners, up, I think, up to now, which is an incredible amount and look no threat whatsoever at any of them. Um, but it's a really open game and Spurs just slowly but surely coming back into it as the half's gone on. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Son Hyun Min, what are, how much has his influence told, do you think, in this one? Um, I think he's good on the ball, but I think wan has almost got them. He knows he can't go past wan so he's trying to pick off a pass or play a teammate in. So it's a different type of performance from probably five years ago that you would expect from from uh, Sonny. In those days, he would burst past you, he'd take you on one-on-one. He was a real handful. Now he's got to be a bit more studious with the way he picks a pass and rolls a teammate in or looks to manipulate the ball to get a finish away. Yeah. Um, interesting to see West Ham playing as well. There was, particularly in the sort of the opening exchanges of that first half, this, there was some really nice football played there. Do you think that the message from Lopetegui looks like it's starting to be translated onto the pitch in some instances? Well... As I said a, a few weeks ago when asked about you know his tenure at present, it will take him t- time to know his best 11, which players to trust, which ones not to trust so much. Um, his best 11, definitely. And the, the team that he's got out there, yes, they've had to defend at times, but Tottenham ask good questions of you, especially at home. And, but the threat that they've had in, in Kudos on one side and more importantly probably Bowen on, on the right hand yeah. side just in front of us has been a bit of a handful for Spurs yeah. on occasion yeah that was the next thing I was going to ask you about Jared Bowen his influence is so huge isn't it in every single aspect of his game well the good thing um, for what he does from an attacking point of view which makes it difficult for defenders is he runs at pace at you and he keeps the ball tight he manipulates it quickly between his left and right foot and you're always especially when he gets in the penalty box you're so fearful of dangling a toe knowing full well if you mistime it there's a penalty to be had yeah <laughs> looking forward to the second half Stu I'm, I'm loving the game to be honest with you I got in my car this morning Resh and I thought what a brilliant game we've got <laughs> in front of us and I don't think it's disappointed no it's definitely not disappointed so far I think there's uh, plenty to come still lots of twists and turns and uh, who knows what else in the second half uh, that is up next Game Day exclusive on TalkSport with Sky Sports. Stream the biggest Premier League games available with no contract on now. Like Bournemouth versus Arsenal live today. Search now sports 18 plus stream via internet terms apply. Settle down for a night of crime. Witness a heist. Follow a car chase. Eat too much popcorn. Meet a mafia boss. Join in on a bank robbery. Think about making a cup of tea. <sighs> Be too comfortable to get up. For less. Selected IKEA sofas are now at a new lower price, along with thousands of other products. IKEA, the wonderful everyday. Football is back and it's game on. Get the ultimate football coverage with the Suns' free pullout goals. With the best writers pitch side for in-depth match reports, it's all about goals. And with unrivaled news from the Premier League to League Two, it has to be goals! Stay up to date on all the latest football action. Get your free copy of Goals every Saturday, Sunday and Monday, only in the sun. The new £5 meal deal from McDonald's. Get a cheeseburger or mayo chicken, medium fries, four McNuggets and a medium soft drink for guess what? That's right, £5. It's not called the £5 meal deal for nothing. From 11am. Not available on delivery. Carbonated soft drink upgrade fees apply. Participating restaurants subjects availability. You don't just check in to a village hotel. You work out. You jump in. You play on. You tuck in. And drink up. Village Hotels. 33 locations with everything under one roof. A huge gym with pool and great membership opportunities. And a buzzing pub and grill with delicious food, ice cold beers and live sport. Check out villagehotels.com and work out, stay, meet and play. Scroofix Sprint delivers from store to door in 60 minutes or less. So, whatever the job, you can do it with less hassle and more hustle. Less pausing and more pressing on. So don't 
Don't break your stride. Screwfix Sprint. Order now exclusively on a Screwfix app. Five pound delivery charge. No minimum spend. Don't stop. Sprint. Conditions and geographical restrictions apply. Selected products. At Betfair, we believe that to play different, you need the right tools. The boots, the world-class tactics, the science-backed nutrition. The pros have their tools, and with Betfair, so do you. Our safer gambling tools work just like the right pair of boots, designed to keep you on top of your game. Open the Betfair app to equip yourself so you can bet at your best. Betfair. Play different. 18 plus be gamblerware.org. We all fantasize about our perfect home. Watching the big game cozied up in the snug. Balmy summer nights with the kids playing on the lawn. We're playing around my football! But come on, this isn't real. Listen, if you're serious about making your fantasy a reality, find out what your home is worth instantly with a free online valuation estimate. Get real about moving. Get on the market. Most common time to obtain an online quote between 1st of April 2024 and 30th of June 2024 was under three minutes. Excludes Northern Ireland. Game day exclusive on TalkSport with Enterprise Rent-A-Car. Enterprise has vans of all shapes and sizes. So if you've got a plan, we've got a van. Game day. It's football to the max. Game day exclusive on Talk Sports. You're listening to Game Day Exclusive. I'm Rashmin Chowdhury. We're live at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, where at half time it is Spurs 1, West Ham 1. Really entertaining that game uh, here at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. The atmosphere has been absolutely brilliant. We hope you've been enjoying uh, listening to it wherever you are. Let's update you with all the latest scores elsewhere in the 12 30 kickoffs across the country and across the divisions uh, this lunchtime. In the Championship on Top Sport 2, it's Oxford United 0, West Brom 1. Luton Town 1, Watford 0, Cardiff City 2, Plymouth Argyle 0, and Preston North End 0, Coventry City 0. Over in League 1, Reading are beating Crawley by two goals to one, and Wooden Wanderers are uh, currently at a stalemate with Peterborough United. It is goalless in that game. In League 2, Accrington Stanley, who are they? Uh, 1, Barrow 0, sorry, that's for a certain generation. And of course, in the WSL, in one game, it's Brighton 0, Manchester United 1. So, we're of course focused on our 1230 kick, kickoff in the Premier League here on TalkSport. It's Tottenham against West Ham. Let's get the latest at half time from Betfair, the official betting partner of TalkSport's Premier League coverage. On to update on TalkSport with Betfair. Get a completely free Acre or Bet Builder on football this weekend. Opt in and previous deposit required. Max free bet varies from £1 to £10 per customer. Minimum odds and T's and C's apply. 18 plus, gamblerware.org. Joe, how are you? Just a quick check-in, really, to see how uh, our Spurs fans are doing. I'm, I'm a bit numb, actually. I'm all right with 1-1 at half-time, but it could go anywhere. Have you been all right? Nerves okay? Or Joe? Uh, it's, it's been a sweaty 45 minutes, I'd say, <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's exactly what we talked about, isn't it? We, we taught them so inconsistent this season. Brilliant going forward, open mm. at the back. Um, so, yeah, that Kudus goal kind of, um, it, 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 it didn't come as a surprise. No, um, yeah, absolutely. I, 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 I mean, I'm with you. it could go either way, couldn't it? It could go either way. Happy to see Kulosevsky on the score sheet, though. I think he's been brilliant this season. What about the odds, yeah. Joe? How are they looking? Yes, indeed. Uh, Tottenham are 2-1 to one on. So, the Betfair traders are confident they'll go on to get the, mm. to get the win today. Um, West Ham out to 11-2. to They were pre-match 9-2. to two. Um, you know, maybe it's just me being a negative Spurs fan, but uh, you know, I see danger whenever they've got the ball and they're countering. Yeah. The draw is eleven to five. Um, good news, I guess, for fans who just want to see goals. Yeah. Uh, they look, they look locked on. It's fourteen to one on that we go over two and a half. So there should be one more goal in this. Oh, um, I hope so. Well, yeah. Well, well I, I hope it goes one way. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> indeed, indeed. Uh, Kulusevski, you mentioned earlier, he has been fantastic. He's four to one to score two or more today, so. Um, you and I can cheer him. Uh, Kudus, I suppose, West Ham's threat, 13 to 2. And one final thing is Sam Matafaces bet builder. We are two legs have landed, so we just need um, Romero to get we booked. Rome- <laughs> well, that, that obviously could happen, Joe. So uh, let's have a let's, uh, yeah. We've Check out before, that one. We? Yeah, yeah, exactly. We've seen that uh, many times before. Joe Dyer from Betfair, thank you so much. Uh, that odds ob- 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 update is all thanks to Betfair. Returns accurate as of 10 minutes ago for verification. See betfair.com. Over 18s only. Conditions apply. You can go to begamblerware.org. On 
Sports update on Talk Sport with Betfair. Get a completely free hacker or bet builder on football this weekend. Opt in and previous deposit required. Max free bet varies from one to ten pound per customer. Minimum odds and T's and C's apply. 18 plus. Gamblerware.org. Now, Adrian Durham will be here at uh, 2.30, won't he? Taking you around the grounds in the Premier League and the EFL with Game Day Live. He is stationed at Old Trafford, though, today for Manchester United against Brentford. Um, Adrian, first of all, how are you? Have you enjoyed the international break? You've been really having, like, you've had some great trips, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, me and Jim Bradford went to Finland, England, obviously, for talk sport, and then we went off to Estonia, Sweden, where uh, Kuliszewski was captain and he was brilliant there as well. Uh, and then we uh, had a nine-hour bus ride to uh, Lithuania to watch them lose at home to Romania 2-1. So it was a proper football trip. I had a great time. I had an absolute yeah. blast. It yeah, looked absolutely fat. Well, certainly from Instagram, you know, that's uh, <laughs> just terrible. Everything I, looks great on I, there. Everything looks great on Instagram, doesn't it? But, one, day, um, one day I'll post the truth on there. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Um, no, I absolutely love it. I saw that and I thought, wow, he's really, really made the most of that international break, which is absolutely brilliant. But of course, reality bites. And uh, there's nowhere else like reality to bite than uh, Old Trafford because, uh, you know, here comes the saga all over again. And it started again in uh, Eric Ten Hag's press conference. He's accused journalists of making up fairy tales and lies um, well, was, with regards to the pressure on him. Yeah, I mean, he says that there's no noise within uh, the club. And listen, he might, nobody's going to tell him, are they? I mean, <laughs> there yeah. may well be conversations. Who knows? And, and he, he certainly doesn't know if conversations are being had when he's not in the room. So they might be, they might not be. But what I do know is if they lose today at home to Brentford and don't score again, for example, then go to Jose Mourinho's Fenerbahce on Thursday and uh, they get a bad result, then I think that there will be conversations. There'll be no fairy tales. This will be the reality. It's their worst ever Premier League start. Eight points from seven games. They've scored one goal in three home games, for example. Yeah. This is a poor Manchester United team. This is off the back of their poor finish last season. Now, they got out of jail because Man City didn't turn up to the cup final and he keeps banging on about the FA Cup win. Is that a sign of greatness? Is that where Manchester United should be? If it's the start of something big, then fine. But it doesn't look like it is. No, it doesn't, does it? And actually, he's a, Ter, Ten Hag sort of reminds me of... We were talking about how Antipostokogny can get really defensive, and Ten Hag is sort of the master of that, isn't he? And he bats everything off with this sort of defensive lens that he sees everything through. Well, it's all our fault. I mean, we're making stuff mm. up. So, and listen, he may, that may be true, but the reality is Manchester United fans are not happy with the results and with the performances. That is a reality. I mean, Brentford are playing right into and Ten Hag's hands today. They've lost all three away games so far this season. Keep going on about the early goals they score, and they do, but they don't turn it into wins often enough. So if Man United can't beat Brentford today, then serious questions will start to be asked. So we're based here. We're around the grounds, all the goals as they go in. The only full classified check across the nation is on TalkSport after five. So it's back to uh, the usual Saturday around the grounds, and I can't wait. Love it. Yeah, absolutely can't wait. It's going to be fantastic. And as you say, Brentford... Oh, a bit of an audition for Thomas Frank, maybe. I mean, a lot of that's been touted, hasn't it, during the week. What about Fulham versus Villa? That one's live on, on uh, TalkSport 2 at 3 o'clock. Um, I'm really looking forward to hearing that one. I think yep. um, it could be a really feisty game. Oh, absolutely. I mean, Fulham, 11 points from seven starts, equals their best start for 20 years. Um, and against Man City, they lost the game. But actually, you can make a case for saying they should have won there. And they had higher XG than uh, Manchester City in the game, both halves of the game. So Fulham are actually looking decent. Pereira, I think, is um, on good form for them. Aston Villa, we know, can be excellent. They've beaten yeah. Bayern Munich, unbeaten in five. But drawn the last two. Champions League coming up Tuesday, might have half an eye on that. But uh, wherever you look, Ipswich Everton today is, is another huge one uh, for me. Sean Dyche stoking it up by saying Ipswich have spent a fortune both of them desperate for uh, for a win Everton to keep their good form going relatively good form going and Ipswich to get their first win of the season yeah there's so much going on isn't it so good to have the Premier League back Adrian Durham enjoy game day live look forward to listening to you on my way home out here of course uh, the Premier League kicks off with a bang doesn't it with this uh, London derby the first half has been absolutely fantastic the teams are out there uh, the actual the 11s are uh, well Spurs are in a huddle and West Ham have been uh, jumping around uh, with their coach and, uh, yeah, getting ready for this second half. So, as West Ham get ready to kick off, there has been a change for Spurs as well. I'll let uh, our commentary 
team tell you all about that. There are Stuart Pearce, but first, Sam Matterface. Yeah, that change is uh, that James Madison has been replaced at the break by Pat Matassar. And I think that's got to be an injury, Stuart Pearce. He did get a couple of whacks in that first 45 minutes. Yeah, he did, but not enough for us to think to ourselves, yeah, he's going to come off for an injury at all. But I can only think you're correct on that assessment. Uh, Tottenham and West Ham have faced off seven times in the Premier League straight after the international break with the Hammers failing to win any of those games they took the lead in this one through Mohamed Kudus after 20 minutes of this game only to be pegged back late in the set, first half by Kulisevsky it's 1-1 as we go into the second half it was at times a sort of chaotic game lots happening lots of events no one really in control of it maybe that's exactly how Tottenham like it I'll go through the two 11s for you in just a second. Brennan Johnson has sent it wide on to Kulisevsky. Kulisevsky's trying to tee it up for Pedro Porro. Again, not the crispest of pass. And as a result of that, and the move breaks down and it's cleared away. Eventually it comes back and goes out for a goal kick away to our right-hand side. So Tottenham Hotspur 1, West Ham 1 at half-time at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. Bakario, the goalkeeper, had to make one big save from Kudus. Started against Israel on Monday night in Udine for Italy Porro playing at right back Romero Van de Ven and Nadogi making up the back four Kulisevsky Pasuma and Pat Matasar. then Johnson Solanke and Son are the 11 for Tottenham Hotspur in white shirts with thick blue trim including their sleeves and dark navy shorts white socks attacking the goal now away to our right hand side and West Ham in claret shirts blue sleeves white Shorts and Socks attacking the goal away to our left-hand side. They've got Ariola in goal, Wambasaka, Tadebo, Gilman and Emerson. They're the back four. Socek, Guido Rodriguez and Paqueta, who has been booked. And then Bowen, Antonio and Kudas, the goal scorer. Ball sent long by Ariola, headed out by Tottenham, comes out to the near touchline, thrown in by West Ham and they look to build once again. West Ham did win this game 2-1 last season the man who scored the crucial goal that afternoon James Ward-Prowse now at Nottingham Forest the last time West Ham won here before that was when they became the first visitors to win here in 2019 Mikel Antonio with the goal that went down well here is uh, Kilman wrestling with Kulisevsky and the ball is judged to have struck the hand of Kulisevsky and a free kick has been given yeah, I think he just had his arm up there. He was trying to just back in and, and by the ground of, uh, I think it was Baguetta, but just managed to get his hand on it to help the control. Madison is sitting in a big stadium jacket, still with his shorts on, has just taken his place on the bench. Here is Emerson, clipping the ball into the 18-yard box, headed down and away, goes out to the far side. Bowen tries to centre it. It breaks on the edge of the box. It almost came kindly for Rodriguez. It didn't quite, and then Tottenham looking to get out. But again, they're passing not quite crisp enough. It's almost as if the grass is like a, a little bit too long, and they haven't really got the run of it so far. I think it's a selection of the pass there. It was uh, Poro who's given the ball to Kulisevsky, and he's... Like ended up getting it back where he didn't really want it back he's mm. give it to him so he can make a run he's give it to him in a, in a worse position there's always that old saying don't give the ball to someone who's in a worse position than you're in to Debo back on halfway West Ham in possession 49 minutes on the clock Rodriguez very quickly got it out of his feet and sent it to the right hand side taken by Bowen now who runs at Van de Ven then tries to shove it into the path of Socek and again it's not quite the right ball that goes behind and away for a goal kick away to our left hand side no he's done some good work in the first half Jared but I've got to say that wasn't uh, part of it he's wrong selection there instead of giving it a Socek keep running and keep taking Van der Ven on Vicario's pass out from the back then was so poor it put a doggy in bundles of trouble over on the far side he got away with it but only after managing to struggle off Socek. Again, Tottenham putting their players in trouble. They've given the ball away. Socek's nudged it through to Kudus, but there was a previous foul, which the referee wasn't happy with, and a free kick has been given as a result of that. Andy Madley just trying to calm proceedings down. It's going to be a Tottenham ball. Yeah, as the ball broke from the original foul, Bowen's just got there in front of uh, potentially a doggy, I think it was. 
He's just caught him and he's down on his haunches at present. Now he's down and he's hobbling away, Jared Bowen, but it's a free kick to Tottenham Hotspur. And he's still struggling to recover his faculties, Jared Bowen, who's up but hobbling gingerly. Ball on halfway, collected now by Basuma. Square ball into the path of Romero. Romero for Tottenham Hotspur now looking to try and get more authority in the game. They send it wide on to Son. Son encouraged to run, but Antonio is there to try and do some defensive work and block his route towards the edge of the box. His cross is headed away by Todibo, and then he can't get past Wambasaka when it comes back out to him. Wambasaka trying to stand him up again. Goes infield to a doggy. A doggy uses tricky feet and then shoots. Deflection takes it over the bar, and it goes out for a corner. Another one for Tottenham. Yeah, good opportunity there, but the ball into the box first off was cut out quite comfortably by Tadebo, and then uh, the secondary one cannoned off for a corner, and it's yet another corner for Spurs. Going to be taken by Son, far side, in front of that white wall away to our right. He hits it low into the near post. It was a poor delivery, which was easily cleared away by Socek and they're not held up by Kulisevsky and Bowen getting back into the right fullback position will hook it up towards the halfway line. It bounces off the chest of a doggy and Tottenham then turn it round and come back again towards the West Ham goal. Pat Matasar centrally into Christian Romero. 2-0 to Luton now in the uh, grudge match between Bedfordshire and Hertfordshire in the championship. And Oxford still behind against West Brom on Talk Sport 2 Cardiff 2-0 up against Plymouth here is Romero out to the right collected by Pedro Porro sends it back into Christian Romero again Mickey van der Ven every Tottenham player in front of the centre circle deep inside opposition territory and Tottenham with Son lovely ball round the corner for a doggy who made an intelligent run set back towards Basuma a lovely goal brilliant goal for Tottenham Hotspur left-hand side, an exquisite pass into a doggy. he cut it back for Basuma, who only got his first goal for Tottenham Hotspur the other month, he's got his second now all right, it's a terrific Tottenham goal that puts them 2-0 in front, and now they are in charge. Well, you summed it up brilliantly, the word exquisite, Basuma's ended up scoring and shot off to this touchline to our right-hand side. If I was him, I would have gone straight over to Sun and said, thank you very much. What a pass that was in behind the West Ham back line. And when it got pulled back to around the penalty spot, Basuma shoved it through the legs. I think it was Kilman into the back of the net. Ariola no chance, unsighted. Not the most clinical of finishes but a very, very important goal for Tottenham. Tottenham 2, West Ham United 1. And it is a goal of high quality. And West Ham have got to come from behind. And Basuma has just collided with Antonio on the edge of the area, who had a very quick glance, hopeful glance, in the direction of the referee. And the play on was the call. Here is Kudus trying to skip his way past two players. Three players. Goes past Basuma as well. And then a third in Romero. Can he set it up for a one Basaka? No, he goes for the shot instead. And that was the wrong selection from Kudus because he had one Basaka joining far side. I mean, one Basaka is not the greatest goal scorer, but he was in a perfect position, Stuart Pierce. Yeah, he certainly was. I mean, he burst straight through there. He went past four Tottenham players and got a little bit excited. Listen, if I beat four players, I would get excited and want to have a shot as well, Sam. <laughs> and I think there's two... Pla two sp uh, West Ham are going to make two uh, changes here, I, I believe. Yeah, it looks like they are. Uh, Edison, Edison Alvarez is about to come on. Might be more trouble between now and then, though, because Spurs are on the hunt. They're coming forward. Kulisevsky down the right-hand side. Played in by Son. Comes in on his left foot. Reverses the ball back to Son. Right foot, his shot takes off the goalkeeper. just take the game away from West Ham United Spurs once again have a two goal lead let's see if they can hold on to this one it's one that's been gifted to them a chance down the right for Son 
the ball sent goalwards, spilt by Ariola, hit the back of Tadebo, and then trickled behind him into the empty net. There's fortune about it, all right, but no doubting that Tottenham now have a two-goal lead. Well, an incredible good fortune for Tottenham. A couple of ricochets off defender and goalkeeper. But once again, Sun, that little bit of know-how has guided the ball to Goldwood. And, West, and uh, Tottenham have had a brilliant start to this second half. Ten minutes in, 3-1 up. 3-1 Spurs, ten minutes into the second half. And uh, West Ham have got it all to do now, Stuart Pearce. They certainly have. It was Ariola. He's managed to stop uh, his first effort with his right foot. And Suchek has just been booked for something right next to the touchline here. Uh, he got booked for having a shoving match on halfway with a Tottenham player before the uh, centre circle kick was taken. I'll tell you what seems to happen now from all centres. The team not in possession seem to block someone getting back to their goalkeeper. I don't know whether that had part and parcel of it. I think he was wrestling. Was he wrestling with Romero on the halfway line? Somehow, Romero didn't get booked, but Socek did. Which isn't good for your charity bet. I didn't want to bring it up. 3-1 to Tottenham. And let's be completely clear, it's not a 3-1 game. But they've come out in this second half and they've managed to put the squeeze on West Ham United. Really good goal, brilliant goal by the way, that uh, Basuma ended up finishing off but was cultivated by Son. But then the mishap at the back. Ariola actually has been brilliant in some moments of this game and he's been a bit troublesome in others and I think that was an example of that. It was a soft effort really that he should have handled. Tadebo got in his way, the deflection didn't help him and it just ended up squirming behind him. Yeah, he's gone with his feet there and uh, ended up just basically kicked it straight onto Tadebo. who couldn't do a great deal about it. Here is uh, Kudus down the left-hand side looking to win a corner off Basuma and he's done that. And West Ham now not making a double change, they're going to make a triple change. Carlos Soler, Crescencio Somerville and Alvarez incoming for Julian Lopetegui. Uh, Ange Postacoglu looks satisfied with whatever he said at half-time and the change has certainly come off for them. Corner to defend here for Tottenham though, away to our left. In the sunshine, the ball's into the box, taken away by Basuma. Comes out to Guido Rodriguez, chipped over the top again and it should be handled by Bakaria. Now surely Tottenham can't throw away a two-goal lead now. Well, the way the game's going and swinging ebb and flow, which we've seen in the first half, but probably more so in the second half, uh, anything's possible, I would say. And I think if, if West Ham do get a goal back, there'll be nervous times around the stadium. Rodriguez, flipping it forward out towards the near side. Chested down by... Kudus, who looks to try and get it out towards the near side, and finds Emerson, Guido Rodriguez and Kudus once again. Haven't seen enough from Paqueta in the game, especially high up the pitch. Out on the right side, the ball collected by Juan Bissaka. He cuts in field, plays it into Paqueta. He then pushes it on to Bowen. Bowen's ball cut out by Romero. He strives forward and gets them on the attack but doesn't quite manage to uh, win the ball gives it away and now Bowen on the turn running up against the Tottenham defence Pat Matesar gets there first and then very quickly released it out to the left hand side and Son on the chase he's got Tadebo in front of him he runs into the penalty area he goes on the outside left but he's shot goal it's 4-1 to Spurs Son is back alright Premier League football is back Son is back and Tottenham are blowing away the cobwebs. Great ball by Pat Matesar out to the left-hand side. Son went on the charge, faced up to Debo, went on the outside and tuck it up in the near corner under the goalkeeper. It's 4-1.
Well, how a game's turned on its head like this is quite incredible. Tottenham have had an incredible start of the second half. Sun there broke away on the left-hand side. He rocked and rolled to Debo. And in the end, he's pulled it onto that trusty left foot of ease. An unloaded one that's just crept inside the near pole. I think if it's gone through Ariola's legs, I believe. Kept it hard and low. And the game looks way beyond... Uh, West Ham at this moment in time. I think it's so checked. Paqueta and Antonio, who are off. But I think, unfortunately, for West Ham United fans, it's a little bit too little, too late. 4 1 the score now. And this is a real problem for Julian Lopetegui, who has seen his team only win twice in the Premier League and that was against Ipswich and a very fortunate victory against Palace. They got a point at Fulham they probably didn't deserve as well. And now they're under the cosh again. They've given it away cheaply. Johnson's going through the centre, comes to Son instead, hits the post and goes behind. Inside of the post, rolls along the goal line and goes out the other side. And it's a massive, massive let up for West Ham United who should have been 5-1 down. Well, we, it's just fell brilliantly for Son to come on and hit it. And he's done exactly that. And it's cannoned off the post and ended up just shooting straight across the goal line and out the other side. Incredible. And West Ham look as though they can concede freely at this moment in time. 4-1. The scoreline, it could have been more. West Ham getting cut open too quickly. And again, we complained about this in the first half, not being direct enough to swift enough with the final ball into the final third. They've done that, and they've scored as a result. And there's another opportunity here at the other end. And West Ham uh, coming forward. It breaks for Kudus. It cleared off the line. Did it hit a hand? The referee is going to consult with his VAR because as the ball squirmed through the six-yard box, Kudus hit it goalwards, and it looked as if it might have come off the arm uh, the doggy did, but his arm was by the side of his body. Yeah, he didn't put his arm out in any way, shape or form. I'll be astounded if this, uh, or on current sort of form by penalties, whether this is given or not. West Ham need a lifeline. They need something to go their way, but I'm not sure it'll be this. Well, I think it's got to be play on, hasn't it? You can't give a penalty for that. It just goes to show, 4-1 up Tottenham, could have been 5-1. West Ham had, had an opportunity of getting back into the game. Well, he should have scored it, actually. Forget the, whether or not he hit a hand or not. He yeah. should have put it in, shouldn't he, could have? Well, from that distance, potentially, yes. They still don't look 100% secure. Tottenham Hotspur, as the ball comes in towards the near post from the corner. Vicario's got a cap on, by the way. You don't see those very often nowadays in goalkeepers. Ball clipped in by Emerson into the box from the left-hand side. Cut out by Bissouma, who's crucial goal actually was the one that sort of started the avalanche going down the other end and he's fouled and it's going to be a free kick Crescencio, Somerville, Alvarez and Soleron can they make a difference let's find out what's going on up and down the country because there are another five Premier League games this afternoon at three o'clock one of them live on Talk Sport 2 uh, where Fulham take on Aston Villa. Adam Bridge. And the big team news is regarding Villa, a clutch of returning injured players. Ramsey and Anana come into the starting eleven. McGinn and Kamara on the bench. Mings has travelled, but he's not in the matchday squad. So it's three changes in total from Villa for the game against Manchester United. Ramsey, Onana and Carlos start. Cons is also back on the bench. As for Fulham, one change. Lukic out, injured from international duty. Emil Smith-Rowe comes in to start. The game's live on TalkSport 2 from 3. Now those uh, talking about Eric Ten Hag's futures are making up fantasies and fairy tales, but who are the main cast today at Old Trafford, Mickey Gray? Yeah, three changes for Manchester United. Eric Ten Hag, it's Maynou and Maguire miss out to the ever-growing list of injuries for Manchester United. Masrawi also misses out, but he's on the bench. In come De Litt, Martinez and Casemiro. No changes for Brentford, same 11 that beat Wolves 5-3 before the international break. Three o'clock here, Old Trafford, Manchester United against Brentford. Another big chance for Tottenham Hotspur, Kulisevsky again. Again, coming on his left foot. I mean, who would have thought that he might do that? He's been doing it all afternoon. He's been allowed to do it all afternoon. 
and his latest effort just goes whizzing past the post away to our right hand side off to St James's Park this will be an interesting game Newcastle against Brighton Steve Harmison Alexander Rizek is back he's one of two changes alongside Tino Livramento Trippier misses out altogether with a hamstring injury Harvey Barnes drops to the bench three changes for Brighton Ayara, Ferguson and Igor come in Matoma drops to the bench but Minte and Webster are not involved at all for the Seagulls it's Newcastle versus Brighton at 3pm Crescencio Summerhill runs with the ball at his feet, gets to the edge of the penalty area and then ends up down a dark alley, loses the ball and Spurs manage to clear. Wickham 1, Peterborough 1 in League 1 is the latest score. I'll go through all of them in just a second after we've got the latest team news from St Mary's, Ian Abrahams. One change for Southampton, Cameron Archer in for the injured Ross Stewart. One change for Leicester, El Canoose in for Jordan Ayew who drops to the bench. It's Southampton against Leicester here at St Mary's. And off to Portman Road, Mike Jewell. Two changes for both teams. Ipswich, as in defence, Johnson and Greaves drop out altogether. In come Burgess and Wolfenden. There's no Garner. Mangala drops to the bench for Everton. In come Guy and Mikalenko. Seamus Coleman, though, comes back to the Everton bench. It's Ipswich, Everton at Portman Road. All the goals as they go in with Adrian Durham, live on TalkSport from 2.30 this afternoon. Live commentary of Fulham against Aston Villa is on TalkSport 2. Remember the phone in at 5.30. Quinn's Bath. Five o'clock from the Gallagher Premiership is on Talk Sport 2. And tomorrow, the Sunday session will take you round the grounds from 1.30. Liverpool taking on Chelsea and Wolves against Manchester City, the two Premier League offerings. It's 4-1 to Spurs here. Here's Kudus trying to address the deficit. And he couldn't quite get there, but Solanke has picked up the rebound and ran to Debo, who's having a bit of a tough afternoon with him. And he's beaten him not once, but twice. Can he feed Johnson? He can. Right side of the area, steers it towards the far post, saved by Ariola. And Solanke can't get there on the follow-up. Another big chance for Tottenham. It certainly was. So when the ball was ended up playing out to Debo in all kinds of trouble there with Solanke. Solanke too clever, too strong for him. And when he rolled it out to uh, Johnson, ended up in a very, very good save. Cute down to his right-hand side from Ariola. But they're certainly shipping efforts at their goal at the moment, West Ham. They've got to be very, very careful that five doesn't become six. It's got to be up to five, first of all, though. <laughs> they're still only on four. It could have been five. I, I'm suggesting that if they're not careful, oh. it could go five or six. OK, or maybe seven or eight. But yeah, we're, yeah, we're well picked up well, just in case you know I just want you know, clarity is important at this stage ok <laughs> or even four could become three <laughs> hopefully for West Ham <laughs> Timo Werner's coming on Turbo Timo is coming on uh, and he's uh, going to also be job and Mavropanos is coming on too would that be a, a sort of uh, I, I wonder whether or not it would be a sort of like a, a reaction to Todibo's struggles I think it will be yeah Carlos Soler game booked by uh, the referee whilst we were talking there. Let me update you on some of the other scorelines up and down the country. Tottenham leading by four goals to one live on Talk Sport uh, with Sky Sports. Don't forget, you can stream the biggest Premier League games available with no contract on now, like Bournemouth versus Arsenal live today. Search now sports. Here is a doggy again on the left for Tottenham as they look to go in search of a fifth goal. Tackled by Juan Bissaka, who not only wins that tackle, then goes right the way through Pape Matsar and manages to push it on into Kudus' path and then goes on a run again wan he's got Bowen inside him but his pass wasn't good enough cut out by Romero and Tottenham have it back again Cardiff 3 Plymouth nil in the championship Cardiff who still don't have a boss Wayne Rooney had won three of the last six but they're 3-0 down and down to ten players at the Cardiff City Stadium Luton lead by two goals to nil against Watford having taken just one point from the last three games they've really struggled in the championship after their relegation they've got the worst home defence in the league but they haven't conceded today Oxford behind at home to West Brom and Oxford under the cosh last week a lot of the game against uh, Portsmouth but managed to dig out a late draw maybe there might be a late goal in that one and Preston nil, Coventry nil in the championship Reading playing well under Ruben Sellers lead by three goals to one against Crawley Wickham 2-1 up against Peterborough Peterborough who have won just one of their last five league games a team with the best attack in League One before this weekend Peterborough and the worst defence 
a conundrum that Darren Ferguson needs to solve. League two, Accrington lead Barrow by a goal to nil. And in the Women's Super League, Brighton won, Manchester United won is the latest scoreline there. And Nikita Paris equalising after Grace Clinton had scored an own goal in the first 10 minutes. You're up to date on TalkSport on Game Day Exclusive, live from the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium with 20 minutes to go, where it's Tottenham 4, West Ham 1. Bright sunshine and a different outlook now because off comes Son after doing his job for 70 minutes on the score sheet and playing a big part in the crucial goal. And he's replaced by Timo Werner with 20 to play. Rodriguez is off and Mavropanos is on. So I su will suggest that that means they're going to a back three now, West Ham. Yeah, it certainly looks that way. We thought Tadebo might be the one coming off. He's decided to uh, change shape. And, uh, yeah. Exactly what's happened. Somerville looks as though he's playing just behind Bowen in the centre of, uh, of the pitch. Uh, one minute for Solanke's performance though we'll ask that in just a second as Tottenham break down the right hand side collected by Kulisevsky gets into the area lovely little reverse pass into Pedro Porro who rushed that crushed it well past the post and out for a goal kick away to our right hand side yeah, what have you made of Solanke's contribution to the game today? a um, couple of things I would turn around and say I've not seen him having too many efforts at goal which, which would concern me slightly the other side of that, I think he's worked hard for the team and he's offered a physical presence up there as well. So, a, a bit of sweet one. He's played his part in the team ethic, which I quite like, but I'd like to see him having more sort of efforts in and around uh, the goal. And Tottenham lead by four goals to one against West Ham. The latest odds from Betfair, the official betting partner of Talksport's Premier League coverage. Right now, you can get Dominic Solanke to score next at 15 to 2. You can back Brennan Johnson at 12 to 1. That's all thanks to Betfair. Here is Timo Werner, left side, trying to find uh, Basuma. Uh, didn't quite feed him properly. And then Kudus has got there ahead of Van de Ven and galloped into opposition territory. He needs support. Somerville provides it. A little nudge on towards Bowen. Edge of the D. He sets it back into the path of Edson Alvarez. They're going backwards rather than forwards here, West Ham, after a promising attack. And it seems to have petered out rather quickly with a bit of miscontrol from Kudus. He's got it back again. Goes round Werner. Sends the ball into the near post. He goes past... Alvarez and then he's shoveled away by Vicario down by his far post goes back to the edge of the box and then it comes to Johnson who tries to drag Tottenham clear and uh, well yeah, I thought he was going to get a free kick there and he madly said no no I think he was right as well personally Alvarez back to Kilman back down the left hand side collected now by Emerson whose delivery is the deep one it's in towards Alvarez who headed it but didn't get any proper purchase on it and it goes behind and Vicario just a little bit of a warning from him he's seen his team slacken off before and he doesn't want them to do it again yeah and Hummy Kudos just a little bit guilty of just not finding the right pass is he you know he gets you off your seat a little bit and then just lacking in a, a real clinical pass on occasion well Spurs and West Ham rivals not maybe as hateful as the Spurs-Arsenal rivalry and depending on who you're talking to West Ham whether they uh, hate Chelsea or Tottenham more is I think dependent on generation but for West Ham Tottenham historically have been a big big rival and losing 4-1 away from home at this ground is not going to go down particularly well with those travelling support over on the far side here is Somerville being chased by Romero he plays it against the Argentine it's out for a corner on this near touchline well I can't remember a game Sam when we've had so many corners you know it's been quite incredible even West Ham's tally is mounting now yes it certainly is and uh, I think I'm right in saying that despite the fact that we've had five goals I don't think any of them have come from a corner <laughs> Here is the ball in towards the near post. It's flicked away and Kulisevsky is on the chase, but Somerville's going to get there first before it reaches the edge of the centre circle. And West Ham have retrieved it once again. We've had a grand total of 18 corners in the game. Yeah, and as you say, no one's looked like anywhere near scoring a goal from a corner. I think West Ham have missed a trick, really. They should be putting it and crowding out for Cario. They've not really done that. 
wan has made a good run down the right, fed by Kudus. He takes it into the sunshine opposite us. In it goes to Kudus once again. A little turn by him, and then he flicks it out, left-footed, into the path of Emerson, who's joined the attack on the near side. Back into Edson Alvarez, who skips past Basuma, then tries to feed it into the path of Emerson, but it was watched by Pedro Porro, who managed to intervene, kick it out of play, and away for a throw on this near side. West Ham have been pretty good at getting on the score sheet, but scoring enough goals has been an issue for them. Bowen scored his first goal in six games against Ipswich. Antonio's only scored once. They've got full Krug yet to come into the team. £27.5 million, pounds, 31 years of age. Injury record, which has meant that he's actually missed 1,024 days in his career with injury, which equates to around about 2.8 years. So a little bit concerning for Lopetegui. Yeah, as I say, they, they want the opportunities. New players especially, you want to have an impact at your new club and he certainly hasn't got going as yet. Spurs injury issues have cleared up. Son playing 70 minutes today. Richarlison back on the bench today. We were a bit concerned about what happened to Madison at half-time. We won't be concerned with Solanke here, who slammed his way past three players, played it out to the right-hand side. Johnson couldn't get past Kilman. Good slide tackle by the former Wolves man to push it out on this near touchline. Collected by Kulisevsky, though, as Tottenham pressed their advantage. Good cross towards the far post. Timo Werner with a header across the face of goal. And they needed more sort of purpose and went should have gone actually more forcefully for goal rather than hitting it through the six-yard box. And it's cleared away up as far as Bowen who chests it down takes it round Romero Romero tries to tug at him doesn't pull him back allows the ball to run into Kudus's path Kudus wants to give it back to Bowen Bowen retrieves turns fires it into Wambasaka. back to Bowen again and then Kudus tries to attack a doggy down the right side as West Ham look at it Wambasaka goes behind him and he just needed to flick it into his path he didn't he held on to it and Tottenham have pinched it and they're encouraged to go forward again and they won't just think we have 4-1 up so that's it that's enough because apparently they don't look at the scoreboard well put it this way they're getting more and more opportunities on West Ham's goal as the game's going on that is for sure and uh, Werner was the latest who had a, a free header at the far post couldn't direct it on target what was his problem there was it that he didn't believe that he was going to score should he have been more sort of forceful in directing it on target rather than just sort of trying to get something on it I just think the angle was a little bit tight but you've got to make your mind up then whether a headed pass is on to a teammate in front of goal or I'm going to take a touch here and unload one with my feet he just said I'll keep the ball alive and, and then the chance is gone because you're just heading it across the face of goal and you wonder whether or not that's to do with confidence or the Very fact much that so. actually it's down to the fact that he doesn't see himself as a killer and it, it, the, the best finishers just dive straight in there and make that that goes on target right well the best finishers make the best calls and judgment calls very quickly and as I say at the far post there I don't know it, who, who do we think in the league is a fantastic finisher probably Mo Salah Mo Salah would have probably took a touch with his chest and unloaded a, a half volley potentially Cardiff have gone 4-0 up against Plymouth they're down to 10 players and uh, we are into the final 12 minutes here on Talk Sport Tottenham 4 West Ham 1 on Talk Sport with Enterprise Rent-A-Car Enterprise has 450 branches for all the vehicle your business needs the Tottenham Hotspur they are generous of spirit aren't they I mean just when you think that the game is beyond West Ham Vicario will do his level best to present a chance to someone he does look a I wouldn't say a bag of nerves but he's not got a picture in his mind when he receives it and then he took an eternity and you can't do that not when you've got the likes of Bowen bearing down on you and Bowen almost nabbed it in the end it went out over on the far side and uh, Tottenham were able to clear I mean he's all hands up in the air and bellowing at his teammates but when the ball comes back to you you've got to know what you're going to do next you, well put it this way before the ball arrives at your feet you've got to know exactly what the plan is in your mind if you haven't got that and you look up at that stage the Premier League's too quick and people don't allow you any time and just looking at the distribution of uh, Alphonse Areola just for any youngsters looking when he's playing the ball out he's giving too much height to the ball he's got to take probably another 10 metres of height off the ball 
because that's just giving the opposition time to reassess and get there for a, a completed header when it arrives. Because by the time it's gone up, collected the snow and come back down again, they've had the opportunity to readjust. Exactly, and, it, and he's done that a little bit continually during the game. He's just got to take some height off it. Maybe a different golf club, if you like. Yeah, they're going to choose uh, another club from their bag, Tottenham Hotspur. Richarlison about to come on for the final 10 minutes here after pretty much most of the season with injury, which has been a problem for him. I've got to say, the West Ham fans look as though they've, uh, they've given up on this game and uh, on their way back to Seven Sisters. Yes. Well, it is a long walk. They've started to go early because I think they know the game is up. Uh, it is about a mile, isn't it, the, the walk from Seven Sisters? And you'll be pleased to know that all the buses are on diversions today. So they chucked me off at Bruce Grove and I had to walk from there. On comes uh, Richarlison, replacing Solanke for the final 10 minutes of the game. Yeah. Tottenham have got a big week coming up, they need to protect their players and this is uh, the right way of doing it. Yeah, Solanke has done well today, he's led the line, he's getting a lot of appreciation and love from in and around the uh, ground and rightly so. I don't think he's had a lot of goal scoring opportunities but he's worked tirelessly for the team. On comes Richarlison, his hair dyed platinum. And off comes Basuma, and on comes Bentancor. And Basuma with that second goal, the real important goal in the game, I think. Bentancor, who performed well at Old Trafford, and finished third in the Copa de America, was away with Uruguay last week, comes into midfield for the final nine minutes now of the game. And it's 4-1 to Tottenham Hotspur, we'll take you around our grounds from 2.30 this afternoon and don't forget the Talk Sport YouTube channel loads of fresh new content on there every day boxing on talk boxing the NFL show each week and of course all the football content that you need to keep you going that's Talk Sport on YouTube and remember on Monday Ali McCoy's OBE and Jeff Stelling return on the Superstar Breakfast from Talk Sport that's 6 o'clock reviewing all the weekend's action West Ham playing out from the back Looked a bit dicey, but they just about got away with it. Wambasaka has worked it wide to the opposite fullback, Emerson on halfway, and he's moved up the pitch before playing it back to Kilman. Kilman centrally to Tadebo. He in turn just thrusts it into the path of Mavropanos, who had a good international break, beat both England and Ireland in that international play. I, played, I thought played very well in the England game. He certainly did. I'll tell you what he done. He, he defended a lot of balls into the box and got first contact many, many times. Both played very well. Being uh, shackled by uh, Van der Ven and then Kudos and Van der Ven. They start fighting. There's pushing. There's all sorts going on in the middle. And then all of the players come into a tight knot just outside the centre circle. Richarlison is down. And so is Van der Ven. Van der Ven saying that Kudos should be sent off. Was there an arm thrown there? Brennan Johnson getting involved. Romero acting as peacemaker and all of a sudden it just quietens down and the referee needs to take a little bit of stock here before making the decision and there's a little bit of needle because I think the Tottenham fans obviously were encouraging things and the West Ham fans so furious that the West Ham players had started to feel that frustration and now Andy Mandy's got a big decision to make because could us unnecessarily kick the ball at uh, Van der Ven a couple of times and Van der Ven took exception to that got back to his feet said calm yourself down pushed him into the chest then could have pushed him in the face and uh, then there was a, another collision <laughs> where it was a bit like sort of like dominoes they all one fell into another Richarlison went down the referee almost went down and it became a little bit comical the yellow card's coming out but I think it's just going to be for Kudus isn't it no, I think he'll book both. That's what you do in situations like this. That's how they're guided. He'll book both. He'll settle things down. He'll book both. And I think he's refereed very sensibly today. He could have comfortably sent uh, Van der Ven, well, kudos off for a, a slap or a push in the face, if you like. But he's not done that. And I don't think the game probably deserves that, you know. For a Derby game... It's not been too aggressive, I don't think. No, but the biggest frustration is, is that Christian Romero didn't get involved in it and earn himself a booking. <laughs> That's where your frustration oh, lies, is come it? Come on. 
And I think now Kulisevsky's been booked for arguing. But, you know, it's one of those days where you were wishing that it was Romero. I'll tell you what I'm quite like seeing now. I'm looking at the replay and I'm seeing Brennan Johnson running around trying to get at players, you know, and I'm thinking, Brennan, please, that's not your game. <laughs> Honestly. So you'd been right in there, wouldn't you? I wouldn't know. I'd stand to the side and just look and laugh and say, well, we'll wait till the game gets started. Hold on a second. Then. Are they now stopping the game to check to see if there was violent conduct? Well, a red card if there is, it'll be kudos' slap on the, on the face. Apart from that, I'm not seeing anything else. Jared Bowen, oh, oh no, yes, no, yes, there is. It's another slap. It's another push in the face by Kudos after the initial event, which Andy Mandy has dealt with. Kudos then yeah. reaches out. You're right, it could a, go now. It's almost like a fist actually in the face of Pat Mate Sar. So the initial incident yeah, was dealt going. with. He's now going to have a look at the monitor. I think Kudos is going to be sent off here. Yeah, you're right. As I say, he's got away with a first slap stroke push on the uh, Van der Ven's face, which was stupid in its first. When you bear in mind that he was the one who's initiated all this nonsense. And then after that, he's ended up pushing or slapping an opponent in the face. Well, they're showing him the initial incident, which is when he slaps Van der Ven. Now, we know that he's dealt with that and he's pushed him in the face, and that's a yellow card. Now, the second incident, I think, is more of a red card than that one, which is when two players are on the ground, two Tottenham players are on the ground, and Kudus is being restrained. He then reaches out with his left hand right in the face of Pat Mate Sarr. And yeah. it, it's not a punch, but it's not a, a gentle slap either. It's a bit of a thrusting of oh, his it's... arm into the face. It's going to be a red card. Yeah, he's going. No yellow card for Kudus. A straight red for the West Ham number 14 and West Ham's day at Tottenham gets even worse down to 10 players he'll be suspended in future weeks as well and Yudin Lopetegui is having a very difficult afternoon in the London derby 4-1 and a player light as well it's all over for Mohamed Kudus and it's been over for a long time for Tottenham yeah, to be honest, we, are, we we only saw the first one on, on Van der Zaar and I thought the referee, I, I commended the referee for his actions there. I've seen those him go for, for certain things like that. But when you see the second one as well, it was an open palm, I think, on both occasions. But you're slapping a player in the face and taking a gamble. Well, Kudus goes stalking down the uh, touchline it means that he's going to miss the big game with Manchester United next week Sunday and uh, change as a result of that for Tottenham Archie Gray coming on for a doggy for the final few moments teenager who's got a big smile on his face West Ham United, whose season actually didn't get off to a very good start and hasn't got much better. I mean, I thought it was probably lucky that the 4-1 win over Ipswich came at a time just before the international break, just to take the heat off a little bit. But next for them is the visit of Manchester United, then a trip to Forest, Everton at home, and then Newcastle away before they play Arsenal at the London Stadium at the end of November. Here's Timo Werner, left side of the box, trying to feed Pat Matesar, but... Off goes by Van Bissaka, and it's cleared away. Ball down the right-hand side, and then uh, Van der Ven gets back and uh, manages to give it to Vicario, who gives it away again, and Alvarez has picked it up. He steers it back towards the edge of the box, and luckily for him, uh, luckily for Vicario, the West Ham ball by uh, Carlos Soler, actually, was so poor that uh, Archie Gray could just pick it off. But Vicario once again inviting a chance. Yeah, he certainly is. He gives you no confidence at all when he receives the ball. It's all down to the fact is, I don't think he's got a picture in his mind when he receives it or, or slightly before he receives it. And then all of a sudden, you're going to waste valuable seconds. It encourages the opposition to press you aggressively. And there lies the problem. Yeah, one of many problems I think West Ham have got to try and solve because uh, Lopetegui, you know, I think he's going to be... Uh, under the pump a little bit for this because they allowed the game to get away from them very quickly well when you look at the victories that, that West Ham have had I think they've had two Premier League victories this year against Palace uh, and then Ipswich when yep. you look they're in the bottom three or four, four. aren't they yeah, both, so both against the bottom four teams yeah 
And they also, you know, they got a drubbed by Liverpool in the Carabao Cup. They were bruised 3-0 by that loss live on TalkSport in September against Chelsea at home. Since then, it's sort of improved. They held Brentford to a 1-1 draw at the GTEG before that 4-1 win over Ipswich. But, you know, this has been way off the mark in the second half. Yeah, I think over 90 minutes, there's big swings between West Ham's performance. They've showed us today that they can look a very clinical side, but they've also showed us a, a big side of vulnerability, if you like, you know, and a team that look as though their heads drop very quickly, as they did in the second half, conceding three very quick goals. Big week of European and EFL content on TalkSport and TalkSport 2 this week. Forest Palace, Monday night. Villa Bologna, Tuesday night. Leeds Watford that night as well, live on TalkSport 2. Leipzig against Liverpool. Stuart will be doing that one on Wednesday. And Fenerbahce against Manchester United on Thursday. And then on Friday, Alex Crook and I will bring you all the reaction and previews to the weekend's action from Istanbul as we fill in for White and Jordan after that Fenerbahce game against Manchester United seven minutes added on at the end of the 90 some more minutes for the West Ham fans to endure in fact all it's really going to do is give them a head start because even now some of the Tottenham supporters are going off to try and beat the rush for the tube it's been a good day for Ange Postecoglou. probably exactly what he needed after that disappointment against uh, Brighton because this will be six wins in seven now here is uh, Timo Werner, oh dear, fed the ball and then just didn't quite get it under control and kicked it straight out of play over on the far side. And uh, a shake of the head, head from uh, Alan Sugar, who is in sharp focus by the TV cameras up here. I think if he was in the boardroom and he saw a performance like that, he'd be saying, you're fired. Hey, I'll set him up. You're good, you're there. good, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, another three points at home for Spurs and uh, for a moment at least they're going to go into the top six here today uh, they have got uh, big fixtures to come this week AZ Altmar in midweek in the Europa League and uh, there's a few big teams lurking in the not too distant future in that uh, fixture list Palace next Sunday City here in the Carabao Cup live on Talk Sport in a couple of weeks' time, and Villa away on November the 3rd in the Premier League. Which, let's be honest, you know, that is a, a tough game at this moment in time. Villa, Karen Brady is also being pictured looking on, and she doesn't look particularly happy. I'm sure she'll have a lot to say about this. A defeat, 4 1 here. Yeah, it would certainly be a disappointing one for the team. Uh... As you mentioned earlier, this the rivalry between the two, the fans, it's a big one. You've only got to look at and see the West Ham section now. There's very, very few people in there. And there'll be a lot of uh, discussion on the aftermath uh, about you know replacing David Moyes, bringing Julian Lopetegui in. And it's one win in seven for him. And we've mentioned that the only two teams in the Premier League they've beat have been teams in the bottom four at this moment in time. Here come Tottenham again. Long ball through the middle by Romero. Looking for the run of Richarlison. Romero with a, another strong tackle on halfway on Crescencio Somerville. And uh, he then hoists the ball out on this near touchline and away for a throw-in. He's played well, actually, Romero today. So has Kulisevsky. He's had a, a, a lot of the ball and been involved in some of the goals as well. I don't think you can look past that particular moment when Son plays an outside of the right boot pass into a doggy as the golden moment of the match. Yeah, there's no doubt. It was a wonderful ball, it really was. I don't think we we see the dynamic player of old in Son, but certainly what goes on between his ears is very clever. And they went into a, a healthy lead today, Tottenham, and didn't throw it away, which will be pleasing for Ange Postacoglu. I think they ended up not only going in the lead, but they went in the lead and extended it very quickly yeah. straight afterwards. And, and I think, if anything, that probably shook West Ham a little bit and well, their they, confidence went. Well, they almost did to uh, West Ham what Brighton did to them and, and score a rash of goals in a very quick succession. You know, 52 minutes, 60 minutes, uh, straight away, putting them on the back foot. Uh, and 52, 55 and 60. So within seven, eight minutes... They've completely taken the uh, the game away from them. And that uh, goal...
goal after 55 minutes Tottenham's third originally I said it was a Tadebo own goal it has now been credited to Ariola. I'm sure he's absolutely delighted about that yeah, I'm not sure how you can give that to the goalkeeper but for me I still think it should be a forwards goal you know Suns hit the shot it's on target give it to him that would be very generous wouldn't it thank you have you got Son in your fantasy team? Is that why you've said it? I don't know. No, I don't think he is. That. I don't think he is. Yeah, I'm sitting third at the moment. We're quite content with that in uh, my fantasy league, my team we're in. Yeah? Yeah? How many teams in the league? Three. <laughs> <laughs> I'm right behind you, aren't I? I'm you right behind the Matterface family. <laughs> 95. Minutes. I'm cannon fodder, aren't I? <laughs> why do you think we invited you? I <laughs> know. Oh, <laughs> Here it is. My footballing knowledge. You knew I'd be rock bottom of that league very it's, quickly, it, didn't you? It's not your footballing knowledge. It's just your, we know your technical knowledge and your ability not to be able to use an app, which we knew we'd, uh, we'd play beautifully into our hands. Uh, another Spurs player has scored today. Dane Scarlett has equalised for Oxford. They've got a really late goal against Portsmouth a couple of weeks ago, Oxford, and they've done it again. West Bromwich Albion leading for so long in that game and Dane Scarlett has scored with just mere seconds remaining in the 93rd minute of that game and it's 1-1 in the championship and Des Buckingham will be bouncing down the, the sidelines as a result of that goal at the Kazam Stadium over on Talk Sport 2. Here it's 4-1 to Tottenham Hotspur and uh, both these two teams seemingly seeing out the final few moments Richarlison's pinched it from Kilman on halfway looks for Kulisevsky Johnson looks up it's played infield to Richarlison once again he had a bit of attention from Carlos Soler who was booked earlier on he's just committed another foul 3-0 now for Luton in the championship over Watford that'll mean a lot for Rob Edwards he'll be delighted with that and Cardiff lead Plymouth by five goals to nil that's right five goals to nil and Cardiff who couldn't buy a win uh, earlier in the season only a second victory of the campaign have shot up uh, to uh, third from bottom it means that Portsmouth start the day today and it's a big game for them today later uh, they're going to be uh, po bottom of the table going into the three o'clock fixtures free kick then to Tottenham Hotspur on this right hand side in the final 20 seconds of this game they lead by four goals to one and Kulisevsky and uh, Porro standing over it it's in towards Brennan Johnson who flicks a header towards goal it's wide of the right hand upright and it will go behind and away and out of play and that really should be the final act of what has been a successful afternoon for Tottenham didn't start successfully they conceded the first goal of the game to Mohamed Kudus after initially Kudus had had a previous effort and then they responded got themselves back into the game and then took it away from West Ham in the second half of the match. And Postacoglu said the only way to shrug off the Spursy tag was to make sure things go well. Well, I think we can say that things have gone pretty well today. A London derby win over a key rival and the perfect antidote to the blunder at Brighton. It takes Spurs briefly into the top six as West Ham suffer their fourth Premier League defeat of the season. It's not all perfect for Tottenham, but it's certainly much better this afternoon. It's finished. Tottenham Hotspur 4, West Ham United 1. Sam Maspace, thank you very much indeed. You know what? We expected this to be feisty. We expected this to be frenzied. Two sides that really needed a win. And my goodness, we got treated to quite a lot. Even at half-time, we said, who knows what's going to happen in that second half? And my goodness, we saw every single story unfold, didn't we? We can see out on the pitch now the Tottenham players are clapping for their fans uh, the players off the bench are coming up with hugs West Ham well a couple of them are heading over to the away end opposite where we are you'd be expecting booze wouldn't you but you know what the away end is almost empty the fans left pretty sharpish after this there was no way they were going to sit around and watch their team being absolutely smashed by one of their biggest rivals it's been a hard day for West Ham United. Spurs are still on the pitch. No one's going anywhere at the moment. In fact, some of them are still heading back on. West Ham, though, the last of the players are heading back into the tunnel. This was a very chastening afternoon for 
West Ham, a difficult day for them, and certainly for Julian Lopetegui as well, who uh, it'll be interesting to hear what he says in this press conference, just when it looked like they were making progress. They go 10 steps back again with a huge defeat here at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, definitely compounded by the fact it is against one of their biggest rivals. They're your former club, Stuart Pearce, as player and manager. Hard to watch for West Ham fans. Yeah, they were well and truly in the game at half-time. Well and truly. The game could have swung in any direction. And over 10 minutes, a couple of quick goals from Tottenham. Credit to them. Took their chances very well. And it punctured the confidence of West Ham. And there was no mental result within the group. Then a, then a fourth goal come. And to be honest with you, from that moment on, they've had a sending off, bit of ill discipline there. And to be fair to Tottenham, they probably could have scored at least one more goal. Yeah, they That's could have. a tough one to swallow for West Ham. It's a really tough one to swallow as well. And you look at Mohamed Kudus today, he went from hero to villain in the space of about 70 minutes. I mean, bizarre behaviour, bizarre. We've seen it before, of course we have. But to, to go after both Mickey van der Ven and after being booked for that incident, then we saw that he also went for Pat Starr. There's no place for conduct like that. No, it was poor. As I say, he initiated the skirmish by uh, sort of booting the ball into van der Ven. You could have got away with that one. OK. Um, it was a push stroke, open handed shove, right? shove in the yeah. face of Van der Ven. On any given day, that could be a sending off. I thought it was sensible refereeing just to calm it down and book both players. But when Vaal get involved and say there was another incident after that where he's done exactly the same to another player, you can't legislate that and you yeah. can't give tolerance to that. And credit to the referee, they get a lot of abuse and it's difficult. Uh, dealing with situations like that I thought he got it right reassessing what he saw and the red card was his only uh, line of action yeah it's absolutely only the only th outcome we could have foreseen from that one what about the job now for Julian Lopetegui I mean let's just look at West Ham season so far four defeats so far there's no shame to losing to Aston Villa when you're just starting your tenure and you're you're learning the way of this team. You've got some injuries and you're trying to get there. They lost to City, of course. They lost to Chelsea. That was a difficult one for them to stomach as well, but they really collapsed in that game. And now they've lost to Spurs as well. Eight games, four defeats. That's grim reading when you're a new manager and you've just come in. Yeah, as I say, there's a lot of external... I wouldn't say excuses is probably the wrong word, but I've looked at it from from sort of a, a more a more clarity, if you like, and say, look, you're bringing a lot of players in. Your German centre forwards not kicked a ball for you. Players are settling into it. I think they've got as good a squad as they they've had for a long time, West Ham. I've got to say, but they're lacking that little bit of probably what David Moyes brought to the team, that mental result, that difficult to score against mentality, very good on set plays, all of those type of things that, that Dave was renowned for, as well as some, some decent play. And they, they don't look as though they've got that mental result. They look as though they've got a lot of decent players in their ranks that can be a problem to the opposition, but too easy to break down, too easy to score against. I think the only clean sheet they've had this year from memory is away at Palace, which they actually won that game. They've got to get back to a situation where teams can't score against them. Even two weeks ago, they, they conceded quite early against Ipswich, I believe, you know? So, yes, in a game that they, they managed did. to score four goals. I mean, there's always going to be a comparison with David Moyes because he's the most recent manager that came in. I know he's someone who's very close to you as well. But looking at it objectively, there are going to be West Ham fans now who are going to get objective but also emotional by what they've seen so far this season and they're going to say there'll be some of them who will say what, what was this all for because they were so distrusting of Moyes they were so unenamored by the style of football West Ham fans won a European Cup but they wanted change this is the change that has come in where do you think West Ham fans stand now after this let's not make any kind of mistake here this was a hammering today for want of a better phrase this was embarrassing today the way they collapsed is actually how Spurs collapsed against Brighton last week it was an absolute capitulation 
So where do you think West Ham fans are going to stand now with the whole Moyes in, Moyes out, did we do the right thing? Well, I think they were split with the David decision. Uh, some fans saw the greater good and the consistency that had been developed there. Other fans said, you know what, I think it's run its course. We, we want to develop in a different style and give another manager a chance, which is fine. Everyone's entitled to their opinion and, and that's been the case at West Ham. For me, I think what they've done, once you make that op option of going elsewhere, you've got to give a new man through the door time to develop it. And to be fair, that time has not elapsed at this moment in time. But there's no doubt in my mind and, and in your sentiments that the West Ham fans that leave here with the emotional buy-in that they have will, will be very, very disappointed with the start to the season. It's been a very, very disappointing start to the season. Conversely, though, a really, really important victory for Tottenham Hotspur after that collapse against Brighton just before the international break. Um, Ange Postacoglu apparently spoke to some Australian media and said he wanted to strangle some of his players after that. He's had to keep it in for the last two weeks. Then he had them back after the international break. And what Spurs needed immediately after that defeat was a response. It's taken a while, obviously, because of the break. But they got that response today. Well, they certainly did. They got that response by four goals, by the fact that they could have had more than that. First off was a bit even, Stevens. To be fair, maybe just edging on yeah. Spurs, having the home just advantage. Just towards the end, wasn't it? But to come away in a game against West Ham, who looked as though they turned a the corner a couple of weeks ago, that have got very good talent within their ranks, to win the game 4-1 pushes them up in the top echelons of the table. They'll be more than delighted with that. It's been a good day for Tottenham. It's been a good day for Tottenham. They momentarily go up into the top six as well. They started the day in ninth. Of course, that will all change throughout the course of the weekend. But uh, cannot take it away from Spurs there. That was a, a brilliant victory. And as you say, it could have gone even more so. Uh, let's pick our man of the match now, shall we, with Enterprise Rent-A-Car. Man of the match on TalkSport with Enterprise Rent-A-Car. Whatever the mission, home or away, Enterprise helps over 120,000 people every day. Stuart Pearce, who are you going for today? Well, I think consistently over the 90 minutes, Kulusevski always caught my eye. He was on the ball regularly. He was a real threat to West Ham. He was the one that got that very good equaliser that got Spurs back into the game again. And consistently, I thought he was outstanding today. Played more of a central role, which I think suits him. He prefers it as well. He's been he's said out loud that he prefers that central role because um, Postacoglu has often played him out to the right. But I think this is what yeah is, you, is best for him, and he thrives in that role. You could see he enjoyed his football today. He was outstanding. I mean, and a special mention to uh, Sun. I, di I didn't think he played brilliantly Sun well. Um, it could be either, actually, uh, with my <laughs> pronunciation. Let's say Sonny. Right. Sonny. Sonny. Uh, but his pass was absolutely sumptuous in the second half, and he had good good connections in the second half. He played well in the second half, but over 90 minutes, Kulusevski, fantastic. Absolutely. He was our man of the match, uh, Dejan Kulusevski, from today's game with Enterprise Rent-A-Car.